Welcome to Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron is the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. And while many people know what we do, many don't know what types of meals you eat when you cook with Blue Apron. Like I said, Blue Apron is the number one, number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the U.S. What we're going to do is this. Blue Apron is going to treat the church of what's happening now to their first three meals, a $30 value for your first order. If you visit blueapron.com slash Joey, check out this week's menu and get $30 off with free shipping at blueapron.com slash Joey. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Number two, on it. You know, I'm down. I'm all in. Uh, what's the name of the stuff that I take to, to, to remember shit? Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain. Never fucking fails me. You understand me? I'm a fucking savage. <laughs> Money back guarantee if you don't like it and you don't even want the fucking product back. This is what I'm talking about. People who stand behind that product. That's why I deal with on it. Number two, if you're a fat fuck or a little on the big side and you're thinking about joining jiu-jitsu and you want a nice gi, listen, Fuji's been there for me. Last week, I was rolling around and some fucking big guy ripped me. And I thought it was the gi. It was the fucking patch he ripped. That's how tough fucking Fuji is. You understand me? Fuji holds on. The patch fell apart. Fuck the patch. Go with the gi, bitch. Fujisports.com slash church. Kick that fucking mule, Lee. The church of what's happening now, you bad motherfuckers. Everybody wants some. How you guys doing? Uncle Joey here. My favorite uncle, Nick Turo, And my favorite fucking Jew killer. The one and only Lee Syed. You got three more days left, Lee. Then you can drop the guilt. After the seventh, you're off the hook. That's when the fucking three fucking people show up from Poland. Oh. Didn't the, the three uh, priests show up? Whatever the fuck they were. <laughs> I don't, from Poland? The three wise men. Whatever three the wise fuck. men. They came from Russia with a Korean. Listen, bro. Number one, I want to apologize to you. Nick the Turo, I got this big fucking... You want to give me some volume over there? I got this big fucking problem, Nick the Turo. And I hope you don't get disrespected by this. I don't give a fuck what a person does with their kids. If you want to come over to my house when I'm smoking pot you, with your kid, you better know, number one, I'm not stopping the pot because your kid's there. You brought him into my home fucking turf. You should have known better. Number two, I don't care if you show up here with your kid. It's other kids that make me nervous because they don't know me. They get a little high. They think I'm going to get high with them. Next thing you know, they fucking fall down. They tell their mother they were Uncle Joey. And I got handcuffs on on KTLA <laughs> for, for child molestation or, or for giving some fucking kid refund. Uh, forgive me. One kid wanted to fucking challenge you. He's a fucking... Yeah, that's what I fucking I know. need. That's what I need. I didn't so know. I'm anti all that shit. What can I tell you? The guy's a stoner. If, if the fucking kid's he parent... He thinks he could hang with you. Or if the kid's father calls me next time and says, my fo- my son's going down and I hang out with you. If he dies, it's on his own. I know. Then we could bong him. I know these death. kids, but they're good kids. I, I, I understand, but Nick, you know the way it is now. These, I know. These kids are in us. They're mm-hmm. sensitive... One of these, listen, I know adults that have gotten up and ran out of here. You understand me? I, I know, know adults that have gotten up. The problem and said, is, you know, is I hang out with a lot of these kids, so I, I, I forget. That's what because keeps... I'm one of the adults no. that fucking hangs with all you these kids. You know what kids. the problem is? No, no, that's no. what keeps me young. Nick, number one. But you know, you're a nice person. I'm a criminal. I, you don't want these kids around. I know. I could be doing 20 to life. No, you're no right. Crime. You're right. One of these kids eats one of these, takes one of these stars when I'm in the bathroom. He goes home. He sees yeah. the devil. Listen. Yeah. Lee, how many people have sat in this chair eating a star and we've seen them lay on the couch, leave. Three or four at least. One guy yeah. walked around the park. You're bar, right. Packed up his I'm wrong. You're moved. right. No. You're not wrong. No, so I was going to call you. I should have called just, you. I, my I deepest you. apologies. You Don't worry. Here? You give your kid permission to come into the voodoo lounge and I shoot heroin. He's got to watch it. Some chick comes yeah. in here, blows my pipe. He's got to watch it. He's in. When I was a fucking kid, my godfather would pick me up every Sunday. Even though I beat him later on for drugs and he wanted to shoot me and shit. My godfather, he introduced me to it. Like when I was really young, five, four, that I really needed a man in my life. He would take me on Saturdays to 42nd Street. We'd eat something somewhere. 
like a burger. You know, I was a little fucking punk. I always wanted a hamburger or a hot dog because I was trying to be an American. I, he would say, let's go to Victor's Cafe. This was Victor's. was Victor's. Victor's, yeah. In the late 60s. Victor's right. was Victor's. You went into Victor's. You bumped into Kennedy and shit with some Cuban chick, you know. <laughs> but fucking, uh, no, I wanted a hamburger. And he would get kind of pissed off. But while we were... While I was eating a burger, he'd be sitting there in 1965, 68 already, rolling the joint at the table. And while we would walk, he'd smoke the joint. He'd tell me, this is marijuana. Don't smoke when you get older, and don't tell nobody you, that you saw me smoke it. Yeah. And I would see what it'd do to him. And then afterward, he would take me by one of his girlfriend's house. Like, I knew his wife and shit. I knew his kids. I knew everybody. He didn't give a fuck. He'd take me to one of his bitches' house. And he'd make her come on. He'd, she'd, he'd tell, like, show him his tits. Yeah. I was like five. I'd be, like, fucking petrified. He was my <laughs> godfather. He's the one that put the water on my fucking head with my father. He grew up with my real fucking father, this, this guy. This is your godfather? This was my godfather, and he loved me, and I loved him. He looked like Dick Van Dyke. He had the same hairdo. Oh, shit. And he would take me to his girlfriend's house, and he would always roll joints on bamboo and lick the fucking joint. And then he'd get high, and he'd giggle, Nick. The way we'd giggle, like, he right. would giggle, and I'd go, someday I'm going to get old enough and smoke and giggle like him. Because he would just have a good time. No alcohol, right. no nothing. Remember when he took me to see, like, every Saturday, we went to see Our Majesty's Secret Service. That was the only James Bond without a James Bond. I'll never forget that I got skis after that. He took me to get skis, and I would set up skis in my bedroom. And my my, my mom came in one day. She goes, what are you doing? I'm skiing. I would set the blankets up and shit. But then Dirty Harry came out. He took me to the Valachi papers. Oh, wow. When I was a kid. That was you, when going to the movies. Yeah, going to the every movies. Saturday at 1 o'clock, we were papers. at a matinee wow. on 42nd Street. Okay, no, la and I didn't know the language, Nick. Every fucking Saturday, like clockwork, he would knock on my door at nine. Take you to the movies. Dress me up, you know, get me ready, right. brush my teeth, comb my hair, talk to my my mom for a little while, and he fucking boogie, and he wouldn't have to have me back till eight o'clock at night. How old were you? Five, six. Wow. wow. This had to be before my mom met my stepfather, so that was when I was six. So. I never forget. He took me to see Dirty Harry, dog. In the theater. In the theater, and when we left there, we're eating, and he goes, "Put your hand out." And I go, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "Saca la mano, pon la mano la mesa." Saca la mano, pon la mano la mesa. I thought he was going to give me cash. He put a gun in my hand, and I looked at it. And it was the same gun Dirty Harry had. A magnum? The three, the whole fucking gun. I'm yeah. fucking five. In the movie theater? And I'm in a fucking restaurant in New York with him holding on to a gun. <laughs> like, I think he's the greatest man in the world. It was What's loaded, it? right? Whatever. Yeah, it could have been loaded. I don't <laughs> know. I was that dumb. <laughs> I wasn't going to touch it. I just, oh, shit. he put it on my hand like this. I just looked at it and went, wow. <laughs> and then he started telling me that's the most powerful weapon in the world, to blow a man's head off. That's the same gun in the movie and shit. We tell you the same lines. And I gave him the gun back, and it was like that type of shit. But he was my godfather. It was his fucking decision. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would never, he would never say to me, bring your buddies, because he knew what type of trouble I was going to get in. Right. He well, it's a different world. The thing is, I, I got ke teenage people, kids, you know, and so Bro, I've know had parties and parties, and all these kids call me Big Nick, I know, Big Nick, I know Big little Nick. Nick no, they all, they all hang with me. It's funny. I almost got like an idea for a show with like a guy that hangs out with all these kind of kids. So it's kind of like endearing. So, you know, I forget. I forget if I, you no, know. No, no, no. You know I love you. No I, I disrespect just, at all. No, don't worry. You're, well, then you know, I apologize to them. No, no, they'll get over. When they get don't over. Don't worry about it. If dads call me, then they have a, they come. Yeah, I listen. If you, I listen, if you're a young kid, you want to come over here and show up with a slip with your dad's signature and his phone number, and we'll call him while you're standing Next time we'll, we'll do the paperwork. And I want his number to come up on the fucking caller ID, or this ain't happening. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one of those fucking dudes. I'm just lucky nothing's happened. You know, I've had a lot of parties, and kids do what they do, I take the kids. I know, I mean, you know, I try to be careful. Thank God, knock on wood, nothing's <coughs> gonna happen, because these kids, then I'm responsible, you know? So, I'm not trying to be negligent, but, I got you know. dreams. I got dreams. And they don't include comedy, and they don't include fucking films. I envy your life, because I would love to have a clean police record so I could coach a girls' basketball team from six to eight. That's where I would take a girl, and that's when they're fucked up a little bit, their dads ain't around. You coach a girl, you treat them the right way, they're set for fucking life. You're their coach for life. Yeah. They'll come back and see you every fucking year. 
Or the other dream I have is to start a program for kids where every day a different parent has to come out of the house and they close off the street like we grew up in New York. And it's Monday to Friday block parties. And the kids could come out and there's a football, a basketball, a wiffle ball, and you have to do everything. Yeah, but So you're not in that fucking house, Nick. I know, but there's... there's that world it would never exist. work. It doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't anymore. exist anymore. That's a dream for me. To go Listen, out the we used to play pole to pole. My mother was on the porch. Oh my God. Tommy Henry's mother was down the block. Louis Alverio's mother was on the other corner. I'm just naming names. In a span of like two, three blocks, everything happened. And your mother, if she wanted you, she just called from the porch. And it was a beautiful world. world you know what I mean? I just, the way I grew up was like, we weren't rich with money, but we were rich with so many other things. Like, my brother didn't have the same experience about the neighborhood I grew up in. So he's like, well, you like that neighborhood. You like it. He was always autistic. And I think he always thought he was better than that neighborhood. But it was a beautiful place. I mean, when I go back, I, I, it's gone. I feel sad. I, I went by it and I'm like, wow. You know, you, you feel sad because you remembered the world that was here. There was a world there. Now it looks smaller. It looks different. It looks like, wow, everybody's gone. It's like the Twilight Zone. I remember that world, but it's gone. And you want me to tell you something before this again? No disrespect to you. We're talking about your son. We're talking about that. Uh, you know, he went to Chicago. He gave a semester, and he gave. And, and Nicky's a great kid. I know that poor kid since he was five. He loves you. He's a fucking tremendous kid. He's got tons of talent. He, he does. does his own he music. Rap. You know, I think I follow him on Twitter. I think yeah, he told me to DJ. follow him on Twitter. Yeah. So, uh, but I gotta tell you something, Nick. And this goes back to what I'm fucking telling you. Like my friend right now, who I love dearly, has got a kid who was a little men's mortar, but they got heavy loot. Yeah. So they put him away at some school with six people in a class, and they pay a lot of loot, and the kid comes home, and now they want to send him to some weird city. And I sit there at night thinking about, wait a second, this kid, the most excitement he's ever seen in his life is Laurel Canyon. <laughs> you know, if you stand on the corner on Laurel Canyon, see those cars go back and forth? That's action to him. Right. Like, that's heavy duty <laughs> yeah. action. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm right. being fucking realistic here. So, how are you going to put that kid in New York City? How long till socially and the pressures of that city, those cars doing 90? Because I'm 55 and I grew up there and I go back to the do comedy and I don't like standing on the corner. Nick, I got anxiety. My heart starts beating. I can't fucking breathe. I live here now. Right. This is the lifestyle I know. No, I get you. But how can you grow up here and I'm going to throw you in Chicago? I know. Yeah, you grew up with three black kids here, and their names are fucking, uh, you know, Ashteka. Yeah. And they stuck Ashteka. him with a 21-year-old kid, which he could, you know, that's not <coughs> right. Why, why isn't he with an 18-year-old? It's uh, And the we, kid robs him, and, and, and that was the whole issue, and then the kid wouldn't admit it, and he had the, he had the proof. And I'm like, at least just say, yeah, I, I stole the $50 or whatever, and we can move on. And so that was bad enough. The guy's robbing from him. And, uh, you know, it's the Midwest. It's it, Chicago's a nice city, but it's also very... But the kids are flying in, and yeah. they come from a, a kept society. You know, Lee, do you remember a time when kids played on the street in your in your youth? It's messed up because I grew up on, a, like, a busier street. Uh, kind of, but not really. <laughs> it's messed up because I grew up, Lee. I, <laughs> I grew up on... When I came from Cuba, Lee, I was on 205 West 88th Street. It don't get no busier than no, that. No, I remember your address. Give me your address. 205 West 88th Street. 243 Dasho, 632nd yeah, Avenue. Okay. Rosedale, New York. PS 160 motherfucking 6. PS 38 and then St. Okay, Clair's. Okay, I so love those names. I, I, all that shit, I remember. Okay, so How could you about, not remember? So I remember my street. I, I remember my mother coming up to remember me. Remember your phone number, your home phone number? No, I still don't remember. LA 83703. What a number. Someone's no. going to steal your identity, my, Nick. Oh, shit, I shouldn't have said that that's right we'll have to admit it we'll call all right it later. that's fake don't listen so, <laughs> like i think about how how can they be how can this how can these kids be prepared to be put in a big city where the most action they've seen is ventura boulevard it's not fair no you're right you're right i mean he you know he knows new york but i think chicago felt a little weird to him like when i left i i, I had a weird feeling in my stomach like I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just not. But he has to take a shot. And that's all that shot. matters. He took a Listen, shot. Listen, that's the most important tried. fucking thing. You know, it's not the worst thing. I have a friend that's flipping out right now. The wife is flipping out. And he's told her, he's like, thank God I dropped out of college. I wouldn't have all this. 
Oh, he's not dropping out. He just don't want to go to school. No, he goes, I went for two semesters and, and I had a hard time and then I got a job and I ended up in Hollywood and now I'm a fucking writer and that's how we live up in the canyons with a butler named fucking JoJo. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. We got, you know, we got a fucking lady who lives next door to wipe the kid's ass. I mean, these people are filthy fucking rich. They're doing well. Yeah. And uh, the wife, the wife gets pissed, whatever the fuck we were talking about. Well, you know, the women are women. I mean, you know. Oh, no, we're talking about the kid. I'm sorry. Oh, my kid. No, not your oh, kid. Oh, this other kid. The dude's yeah. kid. Yeah. That the kid came back. Came back, yeah. And he's like, well, if I didn't have these issues, I wouldn't have been here. But they, we spent all of it, and they went for fucking... A lot? They bought the car and had it transported. Oh. The building. But they, they, got, they got they got, the cabbage, right? Oh, yeah. They, right. This is just yeah. a bad day for them. This right. is like a bad right. day so for them. So it's not like, you know... You know? Yeah, no, then nobody lost them. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. but these schools are a lot of money, and you're taking yeah, out loans no, and stuff. Expensive. If your heart ain't in it, you don't think you're getting something out of it. Even the school didn't even say, well, why are you leaving? My brother even said, did they say, why are you going to go? No. So then that's a bad sign. They should say, well, you know, well, well, don't give it a little more time. Or you try to convince you. That shows you right there. People go to this school, they leave left and right. <coughs> their, their turnover is bad. He said they're cash poor, so... Maybe it just was a bad fit, you know? He wanted it to work out. I mean, you know. This fucking school down the corner here, Valley College, Tip Top Magoo. Nobody gets their feelings hurt, and he still gets spaghetti on Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck hey, that. You go two years, you do good. Fuck that. Right? You save money. And Figure then you out what you actually want to do with your life. Nick, right. about, think about all the aggravation, Nick, you would have fucking saved if you would have stayed home with your mother. Me? Oh, you still could have got your dick sucked in the basement <laughs> down by the garbage can. <laughs> Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Think of all the fucking aggravation and millions you could have put away if you just would have stayed and shut your fucking mouth. I know. You could have shot NYPD Blue and flown home and lived with grandma Are you kidding? and go to the church on Sundays and still get your little stamink, you suck in the <laughs> confessional, and nobody knows nothing in those days. Nobody's going to come at you with a tape from 1984 oh, and say, we ate your ass at a fucking bingo hall. <laughs> you know, it's pretty tough to hide a cam in a bingo hall. <laughs> I would have just uh, done that, man. Not get married the first time. Forget it. Jesus Christ! If I we would have just a stayed lot home, of money. I wanted you all no. to take five minutes. If you just stayed in the fucking basement oh my God. and socked away your millions, you dumb fuck. I'm doing that I, for I a think couple about years. It a lot, if my mother was alive, I'd be in that fucking basement with a Playboy bunny picture up, jerking off. I wouldn't even look at a woman. Do you understand me? I'd be living there off mom's bosom, oh. getting that, getting those good cute food with some fried bananas I would not leave that fucking house fed clothes free, Listen, free rent when I was 21 I poisoned my father just on principle <laughs> what yeah. just to take over the house no I'm saying like if I was a um, normal kid from a normal house and I had one of those moms that baked and shit oh, I thought you were admitting to something I rubbed your feet and shit when you got home and called you sunny boy do you want me to bring you up the meal I would have poisoned my father you know what I'm saying oh, I would have got rid of the old man and taken over the ship <laughs> <laughs> let the pension take care of the mortgage let the life insurance take care of the mortgage. Have you thought this out, Joey? No, but this is what I would do if I was a normal white kid why suffer through all this fucking life just poison your father and take over the house. Uh, he's got a pension. He's got everything prepared. You know how these white people, you know, we've got everything in case he leaves. God forbid, Bill. Oh, they show you where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Both of my parents have taken me and shown me where their stuff is. Where What stuff is? All their stuff. When, when it happens, they take you as soon as they turn 50. They start telling you where they're like the wills. and. Tell me where it is. I'm just I, I'm like, you don't need to know. <laughs> Just in case, I got some people up there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the burial plots. Don't just tie your mother up and take the loot. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, it's uh, it, no, it worries me, bro. I sit here and I go, well, what am I gonna do with my daughter? I'm gonna raise her in Studio City. All right, great. Well, well she's gonna be a Harvey victim. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, they, bro. It's either Harvey or... Listen, there's always a Jew to replace you. You know what I'm saying? How old is she now? She's five. But I see pictures of her with yeah. you, and it's it's so funny, because I've never seen you in person with her, but it's adorable just to yeah, see that little girl trip. with you. She's a You trip. know, I just like to think of you with a little girl, five years. It doesn't even, like, I can't compute in my head, oh. you know, like Joey Coco walking around with a five-year-old girl. 
But it's it's the best when you know these years. Let me tell you. Oh, oh my God! You got a few years yet before. She starts to get a little complicated. Please. She's five, and she already, like, today, she didn't want to kiss me. What's the problem? I'm playing. <laughs> uh, how, do I, how do I fucking put a gun to it? Like, listen, you don't fucking kiss me. There's no skateboard on your birthday. Then she kissed me. She goes, I'm going to miss you when you're gone. She knows how to work it. Yeah. Oh, she works. She does. They work it early. They figure it out. They She puts her against my mom, my wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She knows how to fucking double track my wife and go, well, I asked daddy. <laughs> Daddy said it was all right. And then she'll come in and look at me like frozen. And then the other day, something happened. I had her at the park. It was just me and her. And something happened. And she threw a little Puerto Rican fit at me. And I had to grab it by the hand and go, listen, you know me, I'm my mom. We'll leave right the fuck now. And she calmed down, and I gave her the tissue. And when my wife pulled up an hour later, as my wife was parking, she looked at me and she goes, Dad... Don't tell mom I threw a fit, okay? She said that? Oh, yeah. She oh. knows. Yeah, she knows. She knows. She's smart, huh? Yes. Yeah, but she knows how to play both of you. Yeah, she already figured it out. <laughs> Daddy, uh, yeah, and I heard her. I was in my office. And Daddy. I heard her tell my wife, uh, Mommy, I'm going to sleep with you tonight. Daddy said it was okay if I slept with you tonight. <laughs> She asked me if she could sleep with me, and I said, listen, you can sleep with us maybe like this weekend. That's what I said. She was working my wife. My wife came in and asked me, and I said, no. I said, tell her what I told you. You said, I think my sister tonight or this weekend. I said, no, no, this weekend, nothing about She wants to sleep in the bed? Yeah, so we give her like one night a week, like Sundays is family night. And it's a fucking nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare. I sleep with a foot and my <laughs> kidney all night. I wake up. It's only one night. One night a week she sleeps. At this. My daughter was good. Yeah. My no. son was a nightmare. That guy would make sneak attacks for years. That's why I said he didn't grow. Some fucking guy never slept. Came in every night for years. I'd see a silhouette, jump out of bed, and there he was sneaking in. <laughs> I try to make a fucking move on the and on her, and then my arm it's him in the middle. I couldn't get him out of my bed for many many years. It was a problem. This fucking guy took over my bed. Took. He took her. I felt like, you know, I felt like a, a, a well, third yeah, wheel. Yeah, tough. even today, he's still jumping in the fucking bed, teasing me. I drag him out of the fucking bed. He's always getting under my skin. You know, he likes to bite. I mean, we're close, but just nah, he's relentless. He's and fun. you know what, bro? But he loves his mother. I'm happy he's home because that's a nightmare for me. I don't even like my cat out of the house. Mm. Like if my cat was one of those cats mm. that you had to let out at night, yeah. I can't sleep at night. Yeah. Every night. I was always a little worried. Yeah. Listen, I'm the type of dude, if I like you and you live close to me, I won't tell you this. But every night in the drive home, I drive by your house. I drive by Lee's house every night. He don't know it. I either drive down that side street when I go smoke a joint, or I either drive back on Laurel Canyon and make a right on your corner and come home. When I'm, that's the type of guy I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You always check. Yeah, of course. On people, so. I mean, you don't want to get a call one day. You know, it's bad enough. Anything can happen anyway. I can't fucking imagine my child and another, like me living here being fucking 70. It's a little weird. And Mercy living in New York fighting for a fucking life. Me thinking about the Korean <laughs> hitting that fucking button. That's bad enough. You're thinking about the Korean hitting the button. If you go to New York, and I said it before, and I grew up there. I love New York with all my heart. But let me tell you something. You go to New York and you can... You could smell bomb. You yeah. could smell bomb. You could just, it, it, it's inevitable. Yeah. They're not going to stop till they take down that fucking city. They're not going to stop. And they're building on top of people. They're building they in Jersey. Building, building. On Edgewater. They're fucking, they're, they're putting buildings. I love it. But it looks like, you know, so that's all that shit. Get, I can't sleep at night. Just thinking that people, like Ari, my friend Ari lives in New York. If I get up in the middle of the night, I always call him. Because it's 5 in the morning in fucking New York. I'm going to just see Because he's one of those nights. Oh, that city is just, it's a target. You look at it and you always say, you're right. It's just, even though, even after the Trade Center, it's just looming like, you know, it could happen again someday. Something could happen. I still remember being in the city the, the time they hit the first, the first time they hit the World Trade Center, I was on like Broadway and I was delivering packages for a phone company. I mean the first the first bombing? The first bombing in ninety three, yeah. ninety four. I remember I had a pager. 
And in those days, the guy would, my job was from one to five, I'd get 400 a week, and I had a certain coverage every day, and I had to drop off packages in that coverage. But I drop off six packages, and all they, they, sometimes they drove me up to the fucking place, and all I had to do was run upstairs on the fucking elevator, sign the thing, and drop off the package. It was some type of phone messaging service. They got bought by Sprint or something years later. They were on them. They were out of Virginia. They were. Bay- I forget who the fuck they were now. And they were giving me four hundred a week just to drop off packages every fucking day, down and low, you know, all around. Mm. And I had a pager, and for some reason the pager stopped working because somebody told me they were going to call me an hour, and this person always called me. And I fucking said, fuck it, I'm not going to wait in the city all afternoon for them to call me back. I guess I'm done for the day. And I took the fucking bus over, and I knew the World Trade Center had been hit. But I guess they hit the tower, so there was no reception for a, mm-hmm. a bunch of people. I didn't know this shit till later. Right. That that's why my pager, they had been paging me. I just wasn't getting no pages because they had knocked down something. Signal, yeah. <clears throat> I still remember that. I still remember being in the city that fucking day. So when it happened the second time, I was in fucking Shred. I was in Hollywood Boulevard. No, I was in the Jersey Shore, and a friend called me, and he said I was going to fly that week, too, ironically. And he goes, Totoro, are you, uh, you home? I was, yeah. He goes, why? I turn the TV on. You're, we're at war or some shit. And I said, war? I had a bad fight, too, at home the night before. Man, a bad drag down. I don't know, over nothing, over some stupid shit. And then I turned the TV on, it looked like a little toy. It was coming right through. I didn't know what the fuck I was looking at. You know, in the plane that went right through the second. It was just surreal. Fucking surreal. And then uh, I think about a week later, um, a week or two later, I drove back cross country. I fucking drove back. I got mistaken. I got mistaken in Walmart for a terrorist one time. And me and, me and this guy Gabe, my Filipino cousin. <laughs> Like a fucking All right, after that. Crazy white woman. For two months after. Terrorist, she goes. It was, was like, tough. It was what the tough. fuck? I, th- I wish it was a Walmart employee because I said I could sue Walmart. They were accusing me of being a terrorist. On the I, drive back? Yeah, on the drive back. I stopped like in Kansas. I stopped in all these places. I went to baseball stadiums. I was driving a fucking Toyota Sequoia and I was pulling a fucking little U-Haul. It said you could go about 45 mile an hour with the U-Haul. I was doing about 90. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking you all. I pull into these baseball stadiums, right? And the problem was parking the motherfucker. With the U-Haul? And, yeah. With the U-Haul's <laughs> attached to the... Uh, it's attached to the car. Why didn't you just leave the U-Haul at the, at the hotel? Oh, I was carrying stuff back from Jersey in that U-Haul. And, and 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 so I pull in the fucking parking lot. Then I'd have to attach the U-Haul and put the U-Haul in one spot and the Sequoia in another. And one time, man, ah, whatever, the Baltimore Orioles told me, it's very ugly. You, And I said, well, what do you want me to do? And they go, you go park it somewhere else. So you can't be driving a U-Haul looking the way you do two uh, weeks after 9-11. I was a fucking idiot. That is the funniest fucking it's funniest thing of shit. all time. One time the U-Haul, I, I, you know, I disconnected it. It started fucking going down in Kansas City. It started like... Going down the road, I was grabbing it almost. It weighed a lot of weight, man. They're fucking heavy, though. Yeah, things. fucking heavy. Oh, it was hysterical. I mean, only a guy like me would be driving cross country with a U-Haul and a Toyota Sequoia and stopping at Major League Baseball. Stopping at Kansas City. I stopped in in uh, Camden Yards. I stopped in Coors Field. I stopped. Where else did I stop? Pittsburgh. <laughs> You know, I was there, I was doing but my just, baseball tour. But just the thought that some lady, thought, <laughs> yeah, did they stop you? They, no, well, no, it was the woman. It was she was a customer. She was looking at my Gabe, who's Filipino, and me, who I'm dark, so I can be mistaken for an Iranian at times or anything. And Gabe, who the fuck knows? Gabe is like fucking Forrest Gump. That's my right hand man. He was like Nick. I'm just they, they think we're terrorists. I was like Gabe, stop it. He's like the fucking Rain Man. Gabe is like the fucking <laughs> ra- highly functioning, uh, you know, or he's oh idiot God. savant. He's fucking hilarious, man. Just trying to express myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great, Gabe. You know, like he watches me watching the Yankee games, so he's a Seahawk fan. So now, like when he watches the Seahawk games, he's like, "Motherfucker, fuck you!" <laughs> he's like, he's, he's, he became like me, like watching the Yankee games because 
he likes to curse now because he feels like you know he can express himself better that I, way. Listen, I love Lee Syatt. He's my brother. I love the death. I love breaking <laughs> his balls, you know. And we're in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> And the funniest fucking thing happens. So, you know, in life, you go out and, like, I'd have five friends when I hung out. Like, when I was in 19, let's pretend, 1982, I had Pelican, Stinky, oh me, and fucking uh, Fernie. That was the four of us. I knew each of our limitations, and I knew who was capable of doing who and what at any minute. You know, Stinky was the type of guy that, he loved everything we did, but he didn't want to hold anything. So, you know what? He'd pay you for the Coke, but he didn't want to hold it. He was just one of those dudes I'd rather not hold it. Right. <clears throat> Fernie, on the other hand, would strap a fucking donkey onto him and walk across the border. <laughs> like, like nothing happened, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, and the other fucking lunatic, Roger, he'd do anything. Like, he was just crazy. So when, when things happen, when those guys are around, nothing surprises you. Do you understand? You know those crew of people that you grew up with right. that you really know? Now, I really got to know Lee. I know he's a sweetheart of a guy. And we're in Las Vegas, right? And the star guy comes, right? The guy, you know, and uh, he shows up, and we're having a good time. It's after a show in Vegas. It's got to be 400 people. 200 people leave, and there's actually 200 people standing around. And we're just talking. But there's 10 bags of those things going around. And people are just fucking eating them. In the hallway of this hotel in fucking Las Vegas. Like it's popcorn at a movie theater, right? And I'm looking at this scene going, holy shit, this is hysterical. And the next thing you know, I see a security guard run up. And he just like points at Lee. And, then, and I'm like, and I'm talking to like people. I'm trying to be nice. I just can't leave the people. I'm trying to pay attention to the people, but at the same time, see what's going on with Lee. And the next thing you know, Lee's almost going to get arrested Oof. because the cameras saw him giving somebody a star. So they escorted him to his room, took his fucking, uh, made him get dressed, and they escorted him out of the hotel like a fucking criminal. Whatever. They made him, you know, whatever. The he was, he was <laughs> dressed. Clothes on. They made him get undressed, whatever the fuck. But he's banned from the hotel for life. Listen, I understand you, you tell Lee you can't come back for six months. But really, banned for life, I mean, it's medical marijuana if you really took a look at it. Was it legal? Yeah, but who cares? You got guys over here trying to rob your hotel. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. You have to expect this hotel that when you go to the Palms, you smell weed in the hotel at the Palms. <laughs> if you check into the Palms with your kids and you call downstairs and go, excuse me, I don't know what to do. It's a horror show up here. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the Palms? No. Yeah, I got a stripper saying, Daddy, don't fuck me in the ass next door to me. <laughs> I got people in the hallway snorting cocaine, and, and I got people next door playing a guitar. You know, when you're at the Palms, bro, it's a hotel for kids that are 21 through 25, 26. Right. They go to the club in there, they pop ecstasy, and they're right in the fucking hotel. There's a section there for young kids where they jump up and down. I don't know if it's the Palms anymore, but I was just telling the story the other day that one time there was going to be a UFC fight there. This had to be before I was even married, before I was even with Terry. I used to go to this place, Duke's, for breakfast every day. That's how I got to be 418 pounds. I would snort coke at night and go to Duke's for breakfast on the Sunset Strip. And I'd go there every day and get a fucking three-egg omelet with American cheese and extra American cheese and steak fries for breakfast and a side order of bacon and Coca-Cola Jack. Nothing but. You bring that diet over here by mistake, there's going to be a fucking beating here. And if you look to the count, you know what Duke's is? I've heard Around of Around the Sunset Strip. Yeah. Next to that rock bar, the real for the whiskey. Yeah, yeah, but a whiskey, right? And if you go in there, I would go in there four fucking days a week. And this is after I would eat breakfast at my where I was living. Or these are the days when I used to eat where I was living. Go to McDonald's and get an Egg McMuffin and with the hash brown and drink the soda. And I would go to my buddy's house, smoke dope, and we'd go over there like at 9, 45, 10 o'clock. And I get the cheese omelet. That was my third breakfast. Oh my with God. the steak fries. 
And I'd look over to the side, and there's your boy. He would be in there four days a week, hanging out with a beard, talking to people at the counter, fucking John H- Wilk. What, what's his name? John Wick. John Wick. Oh, um. He would be Keanu there. Reeves? He would be in that place. Oh, that guy. Four nights, four days. Really? And fucking nicer than fucking shit. Till this day, I think about that, and I go, Jesus fucking Christ. And I never said nothing to him till like after about a year. I finally said hello to him or something on the way out. One day he had the newspaper and I was sitting on the counter. I was there by myself. I didn't have to say hello, but I said it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't take a picture of him. I didn't bother the poor guy. He had a beard, longer hair. He didn't. He, bro, when you see him in the daytime, he don't look like no fucking Hollywood model. He's just a regular guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I saw him and I had nothing, but I saw him there a bunch of times. But there was a waitress there that used to work there. Would she win Miss America contest? Not really. But she had a nice body and she was a sweet girl and she was very nice. And I always thought that she was a little over flirtatious. That was my breakfast place of choice, so I never really said nothing to her. I'd smile and leave with a nice tip and leave. Well, on this particular night, I go to the Palms with Rogan and those dudes and Dog. I, I'm not doing blow. I'm doing blow, but I have some upstairs in the room. And for some reason, I just wasn't in the mood to do it. Rogan and those guys, Eddie Bravo, want to go to a bar. But on the walk to the bar in the palms with all those people walking in the hallways, you know how they fucking thousands of people? I saw the waitress from Duke's that I've been eating breakfast at for a year. That's kind of fucking cute. That I never really said nothing to. I always knew she was could have been a freak. This confirmed it. But there were so many people, Nick, that we got to see each other in the last moment and hit each other's hand. And she said, are you staying here? And I go, yeah, I'll see you later. And we kept walking. And I was like, that's fucking weird. And I went up to my room, bro, took a shower, got high, and went to bed. Well, I woke up, I went to bed like at 10.30. Mm. I woke up like at 4.15 in the morning. I'm fucking starving, you know. Right. I said, fuck it, let me walk downstairs. I walked downstairs, bro, and it was like a fucking pick em. You know? Just. You would, I, would, I sat there for breakfast, Nick, and there was a chick by herself drinking champagne, and as soon as she saw me, she toasted the glass to me. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> that's a hooker. I don't even know how you're going to look. I don't know. Right, right, right. I don't know what's going on. Bro, next thing you know, some other chick came in. And started talking to a bunch of guys. Next thing you know, another drunk chick came in with a shoe busted. Started talking. To another chick came up and sat at the table, Nick. Oh, shit. And started shit. talking to me. Do you know where you get some coke, honey? And this bitch was banging. And I was like, I don't know nothing. And next thing you know, guess who walks in? Who? Oh. The waitress from fucking Dukes. And she sees me. She comes right over to the table. We start talking. I ask her, she wants, she's a little fucked up. I get down and she wants to get high. Absolutely. We go up to the room. We finish off the toots And then what? I eat a monkey. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's it. That's good. Then two weeks later, I got an omelet from her. You got what? An omelet. Because she was the waitress at Duke. Oh, we got an omelet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking craziness. <laughs> This had to be 20 fucking years ago. Wow. 19 years ago it was. Got a good memory, boy. What was the point of the fucking story anyway? I don't even fucking know. Who gives a fuck? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. There was a point to this point. There was a point. I'm fucking so lost lately. You know, from moment to... I don't know if it's the age... I can't remember from moment to moment. (laughs) I swear, no, I just... I walk around... Take a shit, you wipe your ass, you get up, you're like, what did I do? I forget, I have my hat, I forget this, I forget that. It's just, I, my fucking brain is just not sharp. Do you not write anything down? I gotta start writing, I'm starting to write shit down because I'm I- am gonna have Anit send you a thing of alpha brain. And maybe you need to smoke a little pot to get the fucking mental going. I don't really smoke weed, but well, yeah. that's the problem, you gotta get them good, I got them good shit, I got some medical shit, this is the, but they give to you before they take an eye. Yeah. Before they kill you, that they leave you out of charity. The guy. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Why are they gonna take his eyes for Jerry, Joey? Yeah. You know these fucking morons. They give it to Graham, do you like? Yeah. No. Well, Listen, take- you leave your eyes. That's uh, let's say on the back of your license. You say, I want to leave you're my eyes. To leave your uh, yeah. You, you leave your eyes or your ears or something. Listen, okay. if you're three quarters dead, yeah. they just stab you. <laughs> <laughs> they just start they rather have your eyes. <laughs> Have you alive being a mobile Shit, at the man. hospital? I saw this. Um, oh my one God. of these. You, know, you ever watch Real Sports? <laughs> one of these shows where the guy. You think I'm fucking kidding you? Oh, this guy left. They'll, the- they'll kill you alive when you. Well, they won't. Because they'll take your eyeballs. Let's say, you know how much the eyeballs are in the black market? 8,000. Like right now, there's somebody going to listen. He's blind. He's like, listen. I want some nice Jew eyes. <laughs> Jew <laughs> eyes. That's all I've ever wanted. I got a fucking implant anyway. I got one implant. So listen, what, what's, so, what's that got to do with the Jew eye? I don't know. Some but, Jew wants an eye, right? In fucking Arabia somewhere. He wants some two Jew eyes. Wants an eye. <laughs> <laughs> he wants two eyes. And some poor Jew's driving down the street in fucking sunset. Mm-hmm. And he gets hit, side wiped. And now he's in the hospital. He's a half a schmo. Are you a donor? No, because I'm scared. Because let's say if you're a half a Momo and you got three quarters left of life and they can't find your wallet or your phone for you to call your loved one, they'll just look around and go, Psst, hit them in the head. And somebody comes over and puts a hand over your mouth like Clemenza. Oh, really? Oh, fuck yeah. And they take your eyes and next thing That's you know. That's not what they do. And, no. and next thing you know, there's a black dude in Africa with your eyes. <laughs> no way. He just got him fucking federal air on ice. Yeah. Fucking. Oh my god. What the fuck do you think they do with your eyes? They, 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 they wait you till live. you die? They fuck no. Who wants someone to die? You never seen that episode of Law and Order when the guy just said stab him? No. Like there's an episode about Law and Order, pretty interesting. And they had a case on him, and the, they were losing the case. So the fucking DA said, dig deeper. And finally, some chick <laughs> said, I've got a confession to make. I went to him for an abortion. And when the baby came out, it was still alive. And he asked me what he wanted to do, and I told him to terminate him. And he basically turned around and snapped his fucking neck. So this connected him to this other crime that he did. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, it was a fu- you, know, you, know, you know Law and Order fucking throw some heat at oh, you they from do. time to they time. They do. And they base it off real stories, Lee. They just change the names. Yeah. But they use the story yeah, and the plot. Yeah, but they're more exciting. And this no, 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 no. So what this good doctor did was he already had ordered the anesthesia. For the fucking patient at a certain time. He had to go to the pharmacy and take the anesthesia out. He lied. So they asked him, why would you have the anesthesia if they weren't dead? They got him that way. Through something he checked out, came back to kick him in the ass. Which proves that, (laughs) fuck it, he had a deal with a clinic that needed eyeballs. Quick. So if he delivered the eyeballs quickly, he got a bonus. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's why he fucking would just stab people. What is he, Puerto Rican? Well, he, he married. Oh, no, he, he's, he's one way. He lives with his mother. Stab him. Yeah. And they stab you. And next thing you know, like, oh, he, he got hit by a car. And then he was laying there. And some ISIS came and stabbed him and said, <laughs> I saw a beam and ran away. Mm-hmm. And Shit. there you are thinking somebody stabbed you. And next thing you know, your mom's touching your face. And she goes to open up your eyeball. And there's fucking the back of your skull. And she goes, what happened to his eyes? Oh, we took those out. He's a donut. He checked the box. Jesus Christ. That's how fucking quick. Don't you remember years ago in 60 Minutes, they did a thing about women who would fucking lure you in Las Vegas, and they would take you to a hotel room, and you would be fucking them, and next thing you know, you'd wake up in a tub filled with ice, and they'd leave a note on you to call hotel security to get an ambulance that they took your kidneys. They took your kidneys? Dog, they would fucking dope you. And while you were fucking sleeping, they would take your fucking kidney, your kidneys, one kidney, whatever. You can live with one, right? Yeah, you can. Supposedly. They would yeah. take your kidney. I don't want to How would they take your kidney? Bro, they would take your kidney, stitch you back up, Jesus. put you in the tub, fill it up with ice. And leave you on ice? And you woke up with a fucking note going, listen, don't go nowhere. <laughs> I never they, heard that. Oh, my God. Look it up, That's Lee. That's a true story. That's a true story. At least bro. they left there a was, note. There was a scam going on for a couple of years, and oh, they finally shit. either they caught them or they couldn't find them because the people were taking your kidney and going right to the airport. They had the flight planned, and like your kidney was on ice by 5. They wanted a flight to Switzerland by 7 a.m. Bye-bye. And your kidney's on a bag <laughs> with ice around it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking crazy shit they do. 
It's like human trafficking. Yeah. It's the same thing, man. Somebody's really rich and they need something you want. Years ago, when I first moved here, I auditioned for a show for Showtime and I went all the way to producers. And I went up against some names. And it was this show, they mm. canceled it after the first season because it was also based on true stories. And one of the episodes was a dude that was filthy rich that lived like in Texas. And I was his go finder. I was like his pseudo bodyguard. But Remember go the for name it. of the show? It got acclaimed. Oh, it yeah? was it got like really great reviews. I was like episode eight. I was really excited about it. I was like critical. It was like, yeah. like people really liked it. It was yeah. different. This episode was about a guy who was filthy rich, had more money than God, but couldn't get his dick hard because he needed a kidney. All he wanted was kidneys. So this guy's job was to bring him different people and say, what about him? And he would go, he looks kind of morose. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for a guy that looks a little bit more uppity. I want some uppity kidneys. You know what I'm saying? Like, the guy was very eccentric. And it was the same scam. This guy had 30 days to live. And he had so he had millions of dollars. And all he wanted was a kidney match. But everybody who they brought him was wrong. I forget how the episode ended because it was fucking 30 fucking years ago. You know, oh, I yeah. smoked a gallon of pot since then. <laughs> but, yeah, it was about those type of people. That that's what they did. Did you find anything like that? For, uh, there's some stuff at hospitals, but they're saying at least Snope says the the bathtub one isn't real. Something with a, I'm telling you, something yeah. with a bathtub. You'd wake up with a note. Your kidney's gone. Medical shit is crazy, ain't it, man? Oh my god! I just had my knee operated, and uh, how do you feel about it? you know when you get an operation? It's crazy, ain't it, man? It's just like you know, the anesthesia, everything. You gotta remember, it's a different world today, Nick. It really is. And, I know and, this and fucking them. guy left me in pain, and then he left for Cabo, and he was making out with a chick. <laughs> and, I said, and I liked the doctor. I told him you left me in agony, and meanwhile you're on a beach making out. I couldn't get a hold of you for a week. I was screaming. He was giggling his ass off. He loves me. He's a good guy. He's a good, good surgeon. But you know, they just operate on <clears> you. <throat> they don't tell you what you're what you're in for. You know, it's why well, you had a bad tear, man. I had to go in there and clean it up. You know, and they, and even now, a month later, I'm sore as shit. Bro, you know? they don't talk to you. And no. I learned that after my first knee surgery. But they do refer you for physical therapy. That's what I'm doing now. And you got to go to the physical I'm therapy. Doing that and now. you got to be there all the fucking I know. time. I know. And it's tough to get appointments. I know. Because you got to contend with other people by the time you fucking get he there. He got me in. You know, he got me yeah, in. The guy you, likes me yeah, now. Yeah, they so now. basically get you in there. Yeah. And by the time you get in there, you can't miss an appointment. Then if they like you. And you listen to them, and you do the homework. Yeah, they you give you a, the homework. They give you a second visit, no. and then they put you in the rotation. But since you're not like a big shot, yeah. you got to show up there at five fifteen in the morning to be on a bicycle spinning on a fucking ball for thirty. Well, they minutes. got me walking down the hallway. Yeah, they got you doing a they bunch got me of doing shit. This a bunch of shit. Because my brother, I was up for this job with my brother, and he's like, "Well, fix your knee, fix your knee, because you got to Skype." I'm like, "What the fuck does Skype got to do with my knee? This guy's out of his mind." You gotta fix your knee, cause then you gotta Skype. Like I gotta fix my knee so I can Skype. I don't want to say that to him, but that's my brother. He's just he's so crazy in the way he thinks. You gotta you know you gotta fix your knee, cause then you gotta Skype. I'm like you fucking Skype. I could Skype without fixing my knee. You know what I mean? My knee wasn't that bad, but it was bothering me in bed. I mean, I'm fucking now. My son's bothering me. Like, Did you Skype yet? Did you Skype? I go no, not yet. Skype your ass. That's right, because I might have to ride a horse. I might do this project in Italy. So it might be kind of cool. I uh, never worked over there, overseas. Nick Latoro, I hated all that shit. I refused to go to the dentist. I hate the dentist. I refused to go to doctors. You ever have a dry socket? What's that, in your eyeball? Oh, no. It's after, like, I had a guy pull my tooth, and it was oh. one of the worst fucking pains. And the guy oh. couldn't see it. It was almost like death. And they couldn't see that I had a dry socket, but it's a, it's it's an infection you can get after an extraction. You don't ever want to get one. It's really bad. It feels like death. And then, you know, he goes, oh, you had a dry socket. I never felt such a headache even. I was in New York and I was screaming with pain because the guy fucked around my tooth. He couldn't get my tooth out. He's fucking around with it, trying to pull it, trying to pull it. And, and then that's how I developed that dry socket. Remember years ago you would get gas, they put a mask on your face? 
gas mask. I hated that. I was always claustrophobic. I hated putting a big mask on my mouth. And they'd make you pass out and yeah. make you half a buck. Yeah, and make you real. You'd see you'd see heads like 2,000 feet high. I didn't go. You'd fucking hallucinate. I'm going to be as honest as I can with you. The last, the dentistry has upped their game also. And you know me, dog. I will complain. I go to those places to complain so I don't have to go back. And I got to be honest with you. I'll give you 100 bucks if you tell me that shit hurts anymore. A dentist? They don't hurt no more. Not as much. I go over here into the corner. This Armenian dude, dog, they fucking take that Armenian cocaine. They put it inside <laughs> your gum. I just went 10 days ago. The day after Christmas, I was there. The 26th for a fucking cat right over here. You go in there. She's the <laughs> nicest lady in the world. Right. They coke you up. Eight in the morning, I went. That takes balls for a guy like me because that's my fainting zone. I still haven't woken up yet. Right. I live to faint. You know that. Oh, really? I can't see needles. I don't like people with needles coming around. Pass out? I'll take needles, but it's got to be on my terms. I got to show up early. I want to get it out of the way because the more I think about it, I'm going to go down. Wow. So 10 o'clock, I'm not going to give you blood. You're like Only, Ralph Cramden. You yeah. Pass don't out. give me blood at the 10 o'clock, 1 in the afternoon. It's not going to work. You want my blood? I got to see you at 830. Quick dick Magoo. I want to get it out of the <laughs> way because I'm going to go down and then I don't want to fuck up my day. So I bring the iPod with me, the iPad, whatever the fuck it is, the music. Yeah. I put the speakers on, and there's one song I listen to every what, time I give that? blood. Oye Como Va by Santana. I put my arm out, and I keep it right here. Right. And while I wait, I keep ticking it to the start. Da, 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 da. I must listen to it 20 times before the needle comes in my arm. I just keep clicking the thing like a retard. As soon as it goes, da, da. As soon as that goes, I click it right back. And the black lady, <laughs> the black lady puts the fucking tube around my arm. Oh. And I keep clicking it, clicking it, clicking it until she she fucking puts my arm down. And I don't feel nothing. I gotta be honest with you, in the last three years, one lady, Mr. Vane, and that fucking killed me when I got the surgery for my nose. That morning was death. What'd you have in sinus? Yeah, they cleaned out the old Coke oh. rocks. I got them chiseled out of there. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a lot better now. You can see the four presents <laughs> now. <laughs> you look at my nose, you can see the four presents. If Have you, you can... gotten a colonoscopy yet? What's that? Oh, when they put the camera yeah, in your do ass. That. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Do it. You did it? Yeah, tremendous. How'd you come out, all right? Tremendous. I'm here sitting talking yeah, to you, yeah. knock on wood. When'd you, you do it? Because I'm 55. About 18 too. months ago, I did it when I turned I'm 50. Lee drove me. Yeah. Lee drove What'd me. you do? You do the Twilight or did you do the... Uh, the, the, the tube in your tw asshole. No, I, I mean, what'd you take? Twilight for the uh, no, you, anesthesia? I put you to sleep. Listen, I don't know. I don't ask questions. You didn't do the propotol, did you? At, listen, I look at the doctor. I go, we all right here? Yeah. <laughs> because we're not all right. I already told somebody what your name and your phone number is. So if I come out of here and all of a Now, the sudden, night before, you had a cleanse? Yes, tremendous. How was that? That's... Is that rough? Well, listen, for fucking Gentiles, it was the... <sighs> It was the roughest night of my life. <laughs> All right, listen. What do you drink? You drink some cement you, They shit? give you some shit. You mix it with water. And you, you sit on. six feet from the toilet. You put the remote there. You, you tell do? your wife. You give her the 50. <laughs> and you tell her to go on Go Go Hotel and find yourself a hotel. How many times do you go? You go about... First, you go lightly, right? Well, we got to talk about this no, shit. first... Okay, oh. so let's say it's... Lee drove me at 5 in the morning. Oh, my God. No, because I just had so it. So mine was at 6 a.m. Right. So it's 12 hours before the surgery. You got to drink it. To drink it. So okay, it's 6 so o'clock. But people don't know, for you young motherfuckers, when you turn 50, you get two fucking letters in the mail. You get one from your insurance telling you that you have to come in for a colonoscopy, and you play stupid. You, you, you take that letter and you rip it up. Because you hear oscopy and, and you know colon and you know there's a finger coming in the ass. Because I've been getting the finger in the ass twice a year for years now. Yeah. I'm like you. I got the sagging shirt. I use that thing. Yeah. I ain't scared and of nobody. I haven't had irritable bowel syndrome. Or, or <coughs> no, no, no. I had stomach trouble I, my whole no, life. No, no, no. I don't have no other. There's no bowel syndrome. I mean, years ago, a guy turned me that's upside a, down. That's another word for, listen, I got a problem <laughs> taking shits all day. I can't <laughs> stop taking shits. We'll call it irritable bowel syndrome. No, there's no other. Well, I don't know. That's what they fucking called it. it. When we were kids, you, they gave you brioche. 
I know, the brioche, brioche key, key with the water. With you the drank water. it. It was like cement without the coloring. It was good, bud. And two hours later, boom. And if that didn't work, prune juice a la carte. Prune juice a always worked. A fucking eight, gla- eight ounce <laughs> glass of prune juice. <laughs> Within one hour, you were sitting in the tub holding on to your stomach crying. Hey, you remember the fucking Jared Tall? Jared Tall, the pink stuff. I love that. I love no, that no, shit. it wasn't pink. It was I, like dark. I could drink that shit all day long. I wanted to drink that Jared Tall. I could drink that shit. There was something oh, else I liked as a kid that I was addicted to. Oh I remember the first time I drank night chocolate milk. milk. I the Bosco. I remember. Remember Bosco? Like a motherfucker. <laughs> I love Bosco. You said it like regular milk. For a long time, you had to make a decision between Bosco or Quick. Bosco or Quick, quick. right? I was a Quick dude. Once it went quick? to Strawberry, I was more I of a jumped. Bosco guy. Once it went with Strawberry, I had to jump with Quick for a while. Did? Then I went back to fucking Bosco, and then I stopped drinking chocolate milk. Who gives a fuck? You like those egg creams? Did you like a vanilla? That's egg? my fucking. That's world. the best. I know how to make that. I'm, no, what? What do you think? I mean, I'm I know. I, know, I, I make know. those. I used to make those. I get because mm-hmm. I'll just what I'll usually fucking do. Fucking egg cream. What I'll do is, and I don't like them with fucking, what do I make them with? I ain't put now stupid. I put Hershey syrup and a little bit of milk. No, you got to get the Ubets. Ubets. It's U-B-E-T-S. Listen, That's the best. I'm a Hershey's guy. You understand? All right. I, I go with the Hershey's Ubets. Syrup. I put two inches of chocolate because I like it sweet. Right. I put two inches of real milk. Or if I'm feeling fucking on the light side, right. I got a thing of heavy cream. If you're going to go deep, you might as well go in like Narcos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'll stir that motherfucker up real fast. Yeah, you got to stir with the seltzer, bud. As I'm putting the seltzer in. Putting Come on, seltzer. what do you think you're dealing with? No, bro? I know. All close that, listen, my first experience in that whole world, my mom had a drug. My mom was partners in a dry cleaner because it was a bookie operation upstairs. Yeah. And it was on Tremont Avenue in the Bronx. In the Bronx? And, and 30 yards from the dry cleaners. It was called Quality Cleaners. And 30 yards from there, there was those corner places. They used to put... Ra- uh, Italian ice, the, 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 the three colored one. Yeah. And put Sprite on it and stir it up. Yeah. When I was a kid, I drink I drink two of those a fucking day. I was sure. a little fucking. They make you run for hours, dog. Oh, yeah. Nothing like a good lemon ice or a good fresh ice. I mean, back then, I mean, you know. We, I love all that shit. And oh. those egg creams, I can drink. The problem here is you go to Jerry's Deli, they want $4 for an egg cream. I know. And they make it like shit. And you look at them and go, are you fucking serious? You people are thieves. Four fifty for four fifty. Yeah. I can make egg creams for four fucking they, days for me and Lee. Four days. They rob you blind. We can make egg creams. Rob you blind. Four fucking days. That's crazy, really. Four fifty is what it costs. Yeah. Four fifty is a yuhu. A you gallon can, of fucking milk and two. You can club make sodas. it for yourself. Club soda, little milk, and to get the fucking ubet. He doesn't like ubet. Where the fuck are you gonna find ubet? You can find it. Where? In some sort, in some markets. Where? Not here. Yes. Where? You found it here. I'll tell you where. I'll, yeah, I know where to find it. You can find it at the Uncle Bernie's. There's a deli right by my house. They sell it. Who bets? Yeah, you U B E T. I'm gonna check on that shit. Oh, I, I got you. I still remember the first time. About the best hot dog in New York. I had one a couple of months ago. I was in Brooklyn. I had a fucking sabret on the stand. I'm a sabret guy Amazing. since the day. Amazing. One. Sabret in the water. With the mustard and sauerkraut. So simple. It's the best fucking hot dog going. Down in Seaside right? Park. Down Ooh. in Seaside Park. What is sauerkraut? Sauerkraut, sauerkraut is, is like cabbage with clear. Yeah. You down don't know in, that you're Jewish, don't you? I know, know I've never had sauerkraut. Down, down in Seaside Park, there was a guy that was there since Jesus left Chicago. He'd give you eight sabrets for 20 bucks. Oh, my God. And he'd make the spice. He'd get the sabret chili. But dope it up. He re dope it up. Spicy chili and put it So it was chili mustard with onions with the fucking. And he wrapped them up in aluminum that foil. Sounds good. I could eat eight of those on any given Sunday. Yeah. No, those sabrettes go down nice. I could eat eight of those on any given Sunday. You would love Sunday. them, Lee. They're just standing up outside. Standing up outside talking shit to the boys. <laughs> Give them another round. Like the way people drink cocktails. <laughs> like that. I could sit with you and Lee, with Lee and Nick right now in 70 degree weather. Stone to the gill, talking to each other. Hold on, you want a dog? Yeah. 
Just like that. And we're headed to a place to eat a fucking... That's the best. When you're actually headed to a place... To eat a meal. And you bump into a Sabrek guy, and the and dogs... Two dogs. The dogs are on fire, because right. you know there's going to be traffic, <laughs> and da ba baby ba ba You know there's going to be drama, and all of a sudden you go, you know what, guys? Let's get a dog just in case there's traffic, because I'm fucking starving. Just to hold me over, I don't think right? I'll make it to Long Island. Right. And the guy's like, you, you got dogs? Yeah, I just came out. You know what I mean? I just came out. The buns are nice and hot. And he gives you that first one. He takes that stick and he puts that mustard. And he oh, puts those fucking tremendous. onions. Tremendous. You tell him, give me, let me get a can tremendous. of Coke with that. Do you like Nathan's gives, still? And he gives, no, I'm not a big Nathan's guy. No, I'm Nathan's a sad bread guy. guy. Right. I had to make a choice and I went with sad bread. You grab that fucking can with the napkin. If they got class, they, they give, give you a napkin, napkin for the hot they dog. Give you a napkin. And they give you a napkin for the can. That's old school class. That's right. And you open up the fucking can and you bite into the hot dog and that onion mixes with that fucking mustard sure. and you could taste a nice it on your fucking, fucking cream soda oh my god i'm a right? coca-cola type of dude well, i like coca-cola i'm always a I'm, type, I, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, like, I'm a coke I'm guy a too Coca-Cola but i want some wild cream soda i would never switch governments and if i had a i get an orange drink was my second choice like rc cola oh like a yeah. motherfucker but i still am a coca-cola and, and coca-cola. No, no ketchup no ketchup then you don't even have no. ketchup if he's a real hot dog man no he won't have ketchup I argue Real New York hot dog dude? No, no. Old school? No. Ketchup is an insult to the hot it dog. It is. It is. See? Don't just throw the hot dog All these people you. out here arguing you know, on my no, kid, everybody. No, no, no. But listen, they, they, they're programmed to give it to the kids in the school. You can't compete. I told my wife, don't bring the no. fucking ketchup out because I'll stab you in the neck. I'm with you. Hot dog. Ketchup's for the hamburger. <clears throat> and she asked for the fucking ketchup. I almost died, but she's five. She don't understand. Maybe by the time she's eight, I could talk her into being a civilian. You're fucking sabret, man. Some dog. No, that's a, my buddy has one. Can't get him out here. That he's Can't taking get him. A, my buddy can get, listen, I get the car for 25 grand, the license. The but pro, the cart? And the thing is out of Jersey. The problem is you got to buy everything from Sabret out of Jersey. They send it to you. That's why. They send you the hot dogs, the buns, the chili. Go online, Lee. But you got to get everything from there? Yeah, look what they have online. They I mail was, it right to your house. I wonder if it's worth it, but. Fuck yeah, it's worth it. You mean to sell it, to have a stand? To do whatever the fuck you want with That's it. That's what I would like to do. Look up sabret.com. Look and it up. I'll tell you everything you fucking need and print it up on the screen here. You know you know what is another thing that I fucking love? I know a th- I know three people for sure, Nick. I don't mean to interrupt you. Okay. From the bottom of my heart. Sabret.com is available for a website, by the way. Okay, then just look, I'm, I'll up, look, I'll look, it up. look up Sad Bread Hot Dogs. There's got to be something like that, sadbreadhotdogs.com. Wow, that would be Years ago, hit. there was a girl in front of fucking, uh, in front of uh, SAG, right there on Wilshire, right there. She pulled up with a, a wagon and a hot dog truck with the Sad Bread flag. I almost died. Where, out here? This has to be 15 years ago when I first met you. Like, right around the time I met you, if you went to SAG, she'd be out there. And I sp- and I actually became friends. That's when I got up to four. I became I, I would go down there for hot dogs. Me and my buddy Mike Kessler would smoke a joint. And go, you want to go get some sabrets? And we go down there. And one day we caught her. She was just about to wrap up, and she's like, I'll, "I'll give you this last six I got. Just give me whatever you want." And we started talking, and she goes, "You know what, man? My husband is from Jersey. I go back there. I went. I fell in love with these things." She goes, "We moved out here." I never saw a Sabret hot dog again. We invested in a cart. They had the cart. They had everything. Everything. But she goes, you know what? For us to live, it was three fifty a hot dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I know. How are you going to survive? And she kind of knew what she was doing. <clears throat> but she, no, I'm lying to you. She knew what she was doing. She was doing a good job. The chili was good. It was the Sabret stuff out of a can. It was the same stuff you got in New York. Same stuff. She wasn't toasting the bread. Okay. She wasn't toasting the bread. The bread is important. The bread is important. And it's got to be the Sabret bun. Sabret. That bun is special. That's the bun it's right thin, there. It's thin. It's small. Look at it. So you could order all that Whatever shit. Whatever it is. You could order the fucking, right now, for fucking 40 so, cents. Listen. Oh, shit. How much is the cart? I don't know if they got the card. The card's for call for pricing. Extension 13 for more information. Own a fucking... Uh, 
Whatever the fuck a it is. A tabletop mini one. You want a the tabletop real, but you mini guys one. want the real deal though. You want Yeah, I don't want no fucking so you want to sell hot no, dogs no. somewhere. I want to sell it somewhere. You don't go to when you go to Yankee Spring Training. Yeah. You ever go there? I do once in a while. They're all you see them down there. Every cart's got fucking Sabre hot dogs. In Florida. In, t in Tampa, Florida, right, when I went Tampa. to do comedy ten fucking years ago, that's what I ate the right. two days I was there. Sabre right outside the hotel. Right. Some guy was there. How you doing, man? Where's it? Oh, you got Sabre hot dogs. Where you from? Because I'm from Queens. Yeah. How long have you been down here? Fifteen years. I came for spring training and never left. One of those fucking galoops. Yeah. He goes, my father owned one of these, and it was in the garage. I drove it down here, and I do this now. He was selling that. Sabret dogs. He was, you know, he was trying to make a fucking living. Yeah. But me, those are in my blood. No, I That hate was it. the first hot dog I ate but when no I came But no one, I'm surprised. Cuba. No one's brought it out here. No one's ever. Because it's too tough. It's people don't walk in L.A. Listen. That's, the tr that's people, part of it. I mean. For years, when you meet people who like to eat food, and they live out here now, there's a big argument about they don't make pizza because of the water. They don't do this because of the water. They don't do this because of the pricing. And that's half true. Let me tell you what the other side of that, of that argument is. Oh. Nick Turturro, your father had a pizza place with your uncle in 1940. They worked there for 20 years, and they bought the joint from the dude before he died. And they added something to the pizza crust. And they worked hard in Brooklyn. And when you became a child and John... You worked for him and you knew the recipe. Now you and John decided your wife didn't like New York, Nick, so you want to move to L.A. I know, look at the passion you have for living. <clears throat> you would have that same fucking passion for your food. You and your wife open up a fucking Italian place, Redondo Beach. Let's just put a scenario here. 19, 1989, when you could still own shit and buy property and you could run like a white man, okay? Here you are fucking using the money got from this place. <clears throat> you're using, excuse me, you're using Parmesan cheese from New York. You're getting mozzarella flown in. You know, the water, let's not get that extreme. Right, right. But you're getting all the food. You're getting pepperoni that is fucking top notch. The same pepperoni they sell at Ray's Pizza, you know. You, you're one of those guys. You work from sunrise to sun fucking down. Here you are selling your pie. The best. The best in anywhere in California. People are driving from all over to eat your pizza. But guess what, bro? Every day, ten times a night, you got to sit there with your father's fucking recipe and look at ten kids walk by your place with a Domino's box. Now, if you're a guy like me, it crushes my insides when I see that. That you'll save ten bucks to avoid what pizza is, right? To eat fucking Domino's junk. Yeah. No. So as a home, as somebody who really cares about their food, as a businessman, you consider it a competitor, and you work around it. But somebody who prides what they're doing, whether it's Italian food, Chinese food, Jew food, Cuban food, and all of a sudden, fucking, you know, in, in Miami, there's a a Cuban competitor to everybody. It's not pollo tropical. It's uh, pollo. We we spoke about it, and they got black beans I and think rice. You're, I, think you're, I think it's pollo tropical, is it? No, what's the one out here? El pollo loco. El pollo loco. It's pollo tropical. Pollo tropical is like McDonald's, but they got a nice chicken fillet and black beans and white rice, and you get a side of onions and fried bananas, and it's not fucking bad, guys. I'm I'm Cuban. I'm telling you, it's not bad. That I understand. It's good food. It's good takeable food. But if I brought a recipe out here that my father worked on for 60 years and I saw a kid walk down my street with a Domino's box, I'd shoot that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. It breaks your heart. Yeah, nah, it's a sin. It's it breaks a sin. your heart. So that's I why I see, I don't see the commitment. How many Cuban restaurants there around here? Listen, if a fucking Cuban dude moved out from Miami, you take a refugee that cooked in Miami and cooked at a good hotel in Miami and he cooked that home-style Cuban food, and you brought him out here, you'd make millions, Nick. You'd make millions as soon as Jennifer Lopez walked in there. You would have you wouldn't have a fucking table available at night, and then you'd sell the dump after a year and light it on fire and open up another place. That's what I... But you get my drift. If it's, it won't happen out here. Nah. Because 
the creation you made. Show me one Chinese restaurant that has pork around here. The fried pork that you come in and get sliced. That's New York style. Yeah, New I'll York tell you style. three of them that have it. But they got the fucking fat in the middle. And the one part of the meat is kind of brown. And yeah. it's not kosher. That's not the same. No. Uh, but there's it's some just like wonton you, soup. You can't get the same. No. Soup. There's some people who get pissed. I just don't eat it. I don't complain. Because I know that I'm not eating nothing kosher. I move on with my fucking life. I know. Nothing's like back home. You know, we were get takeout we'd say what we're we gonna have tonight chinks all right let's have chinks you know and then we'd get that shit in a cardboard box and it was delicious right you know we got some italian food tonight that is acceptable yeah the 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 one is very good the one with the homemade noodles oh Which yeah one? it's delicious it, the, yeah the arabian the, the bolognese the bolognese it's good it's good it's it was, very it good. good it was good the only thing is it got a little Bunched up together, the pasta got. Loaded. That's how it's supposed. You know, it's homemade. You gotta eat that fucking. You right gotta get it eat right when it's hot. Right when it's hot. That's yeah. Not. Otherwise, it gets. I don't care what it was, what temperature was. But it fucking delicious. Nick sauce was a level on top of both of them. I brought the. I real. could taste the street in that fucking food. Yeah. Right. I could taste the fucking street in that food. And, and I just made that, so that's just you know, once it settles, it's gonna get better and better. You know, I got the pork in there. I got the sausage. I didn't even put the meatballs. That shit is good, right? You just could dip in it. Now, that's real sauce. You know, now, let's pretend that you'd open up a joint with four little tables. Yeah, you, you get a bunch of people in there, and you kept it just like this. Nick sauce. That's it. Two meatballs. Bye. No, don't stop doing Alfredo. No. no, no don't, don't, don't get no, fancy. Don't get fancy. Yeah. You know what you're getting? This beer, uh, right. mozzarella sticks. Keep whatever. it simple. Keep it simple. You make a killing. But then again, people will come to you and say, oh, we went to this Italian restaurant that you've actually been to. No, it's fucking junk. And go, it's tremendous. You as a real fucking chef will go, what the fuck is going on with society? I went into an elevator in Long Island. And when I walked in, there were two kids with Domino's boxes. Oh, man. And the father was standing there. I want to let the kids out of the elevator and grab the dad and go, are you fucking retarded? Are you fucking crazy? You're in Long Island. There's a pizza joint in every corner. Every every neighborhood. And you're getting fucking dominoes are you at the crazy? hotel. Long Island's got pizza up the Oh, up my the God. Gazoo. I was never so fucking embarrassed. What? The, even? Oh, my God. I got to tell you what happened. So me and Lee have a mutual friend, John Butt. He's one of the owners at VMAC, and he's a brown belt. VMAC is a jiu-jitsu place. First place I ever did jiu-jitsu. He's still a dear friend, even though I don't go over there. He's from above New York. He's from like an hour outside of New York City where it snowed 39 feet. What, last today? Week. No, oh, last, last week. week. Oh. So he went back to bring his new bride to be up there to introduce her to the parents. You know, this is a girl he fell in love with, Peruvian girl, real cool, sweetheart. And he wanted to bring her home, and then they had all these fucking plans. Well, they went back there and got zinocked with the weather so badly that she got fucking sick and slept Christmas Day, and she couldn't get out of bed and the whole fucking thing. So he wanted to call me and wish me a Merry Christmas, and we chit-chatted. And I go, what are your plans? He goes, well, we're thinking of going down into the city and seeing the ball drop. And I go, no, you're not. Why not? And I go, because you're not doing that. I go, you're not wasting your time. I go, I grew up there and I never saw the ball drop. It's embarrassing. Right. Stay home and mind your fucking business. He's like, what are you talking about? I go, look. He goes, well, we were going to go down there and then we were going to go down to Mulberry Street and get Italian food. I go, ah, that's wrong right there also. He goes, what are you oh talking God, about? Yeah. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, Mulberry's a fucking tourist trap. Everybody knows that now. It's done. It's done. I go, you want real Italian food? You got to go up to Arthur Avenue up there in the fucking Bronx by what Tremont intersects. Bro, they got food there that'll fucking knock your socks off. Really Dominic's and Mario's. Just those two. That's where you fucking it's still start. still authentic. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Lee, they called me from the fucking restaurant, Jack. And they were like, the owner wants to talk to you. And they were like, thank you for referring him. How'd you? I go, I was just up there about four years ago. We started talking. Bro, I go, I go, savor that, John Bud. You're never going to eat like that ever again in your life. He goes, Joey, 
when you break the bread, the smoke came out of it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, this, this, this was just fucking sensational. What, what is it called? Mario's. Mario's. Oh, at the Revenue store. He took pictures with the dude. He was like, why wouldn't I go to Mulberry Street? I go, because that's where every sucker goes to. That's Sucker Street now. Everybody wants to see The Sopranos. Yeah, no. You go down there, you eat three-day-old food. It's Chinese people cooking Italian That's food. That's it. It's gone. That's all it is. That's all gone. That's where you take your girlfriend when you're a dummy. You don't even go down there no more. Right. You don't even go down there. It ain't like years ago. No, you no, 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 You had no, Benito's. No. You had, Those you had days real joints. Over. It's yeah. gone now. And even if the three of them that are there. There's one bakery they, there I, I still know that's... That's not bad. No, it's I know not it's not bad. No, but it's the whole thing now is a show. No, it's there's two guys in front, standing in front. It's good to walk. Make them believe. That's it. Yeah, you don't go down there. You Finished. Big mistake. I used to go to the feast with my mother when I was little. San Gennaro, when it was San Gennaro. Now, fuck, it's all commercial. I used to go down there. Like I remember going down there with some Italian kids <laughs> when I was like in the seventh grade, the year I got left back. I went over there. With, what? It was the same kid that got his head caught. And uh, we went to a peep show, and he ran out of court. A peep the, show. And the fucking thing shut they down. They were the best, name. right? Oh, really? What the fuck was his name? I can't remember what his name was. Remember how fast the glass used to go up? The glass would go up real fucking quick. Fucking go up quick. And you'd be right in the middle of jerking off, and the fucking yep. glass would fucking. This was way before sexual harassment. And oh, this is funny. You've been. Yeah, he never been to the peep shows. You never been to a peep show, Lee? No, Not like that on Forty Show World on Forty Second. Oh, I was a young kid though. I went, I went, I went with my dad, oh, and I remember we, we have a story about me asking about them, but about what? About like what they were. And what did he tell you? They just were you go see naked women, and I, I didn't understand it. I was like five. You didn't want to go in there at that time. No, <laughs> you didn't want to see a little woman's monkey. I don't think so. You're shocked. When I was a young kid, and I saw a woman's pussy, I almost fucking died. Oh my God. I fucking ran the first time. Scary, I don't know. right? Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how to calibrate it. I didn't know what was going on. I was so embarrassed I didn't even ask my mom. Like, I just kept it to myself for years. Yeah. It's just like the first time you banged. Like, you didn't know what you... Like, I don't even remember if I got it in. I didn't even know if I did it or I didn't do it. I was like, I think I did it. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I was an amateur. I think you knew if you got it in. No, I'm telling you, I was a fucking amateur. The girl was a deadbeat, so what are you going to do? She was laying there like half dead. That was one of the worst. If I, <laughs> if I think back now about my time, I just like dry humping. If we could have just dry humped forever, I would have been fine. Yeah, it's safe. I would have been happy, safer than fuck. Come in your pants. You come in your pants, it's you walk best. a little funny. Yeah. You smell funny till dinner. That's it. And then you take a shower. Nobody a gets that. A little bit feeling. of that detergent, you know. If you're lucky, she lets you suck above the tit. <laughs> she lets you see like the little bit of the color. And you suck that titty and keep fucking that working. That dry humping is good because you got to yeah. like, you know. You, you know that there's a payday. Yeah. And they always tell you, keep doing this. And Christmas 2008, I'll give you a taste. It's, it's 1994. <laughs> I got to wait eight. Fuck it. I had a girlfriend that had me on the uh. hook. For six months, <clears throat> telling me she was going to give me a piece of pussy on the last day of school. Really? And then on the last day of school, she goes, she couldn't do it, that she didn't love me, that she didn't know she really wanted to be my girlfriend. I was fucking crushed. Dead. I was beyond crushed. Uh, Sixth grade, beyond crushed. Sixth grade. Beyond Jesus crushed. Christ. And I mean, it was guys at home. You all know when you fall in love the first time that you sure. just lose interest. I was a Bruce Lee kid. Like, I believed everything he taught, everything he said. Badass. And then he died. And that's all. Once I got out of Catholic school, that's all I did. That was my outlet after Catholic school. I went to McKinley. After McKinley, I went up to my mother's bar. I ate something with her. I take my karate uniform, and I go to karate from 430 to fucking 9. That was my life, guys. That was all I thought about. I go back. I had the incense in my room, and I slept by myself at night. My mom wouldn't get home till three thirty. So you went to the martial arts way back. I was a kid. Yeah. <coughs> have Bruce Lee. They have those double, triple features. And all of a sudden, I went to the seventh grade, Nick, and I just something happened to my dick and my mind. I saw girls. It started in the sixth grade for me. Oh. Uh -huh. I went, I went to Miami and I met two girls, Natasha and Rebecca. 
two Cuban girls, and we played like Greece. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we played like Greece. Like, we didn't kiss. We just fucking held each other. Yeah. Faggy shit. And then we would talk on the phone until my mother got the first phone bill. And that was the end of that romance. It was like a $200 phone bill. Yeah, because you're on the phone forever. Forever. Talking like yeah. a nonsense. Forever. And that was the end of my romance. That was it. I was a free man. It didn't matter. Pete Rose was going to the World <laughs> Series. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It didn't matter in my world. I had the Mets. I had Pete Rose. I had karate. And then... Uh, Is that 75? Seventh grade. Uh -huh. I fucking saw this fucking... Guy. Like, I asked this girl out first. And Timmy Holloway's listening. The girl's name is Debis Rodriguez, Cuban girl, just beautiful. She used to hang out with a girl named Jeanette Blasco. That was banging. She was Puerto Rican and had a sister that was even hotter than she was called a vet. Dog, I still remember these freaks. Vet, wow. They were Puerto Rican chicks. Oh, man, not like a Puerto Rican. And Debis Rodriguez was good looking. I'll never forget in the, in the schoolyard of McKinley going up there and going, I'd like to ask you out on a date. And she's like, I'm very flattered, but. I choose not to go out with you. I was like, fuck, I can't get my game on and shit was going on. <laughs> and then I saw this guy. He started hanging out with this kid. I knew this kid from hanging out with him. Never, never really crazy about him. But he was kind of Cuban, so I had to give him the benefit of the doubt. But then I saw his sister. Oh, my goodness. Lost it, huh? She was my age. Yeah. <sighs> Skinny, dirty looking. Oh, man. Just how I like him. Long, greasy looking hair and shit. Yeah. Lanky, just a thoroughbred of a woman. Did you get near her? Oh, yeah. First time I had to go to the movies with her and the grandmother. The brother couldn't know and the father couldn't know. The father and the mother were divorced, but he lived in the basement. Did you make a move? Hold on, bro. I got to get romantic. <laughs> you know, you just can't go right for the monkey. Did you make a move? <laughs> You're worse than how it's doing. You don't even work it properly. <laughs> I'm waiting. Go ahead. I had to take her and the grandmother to the movies the first time. And then for about 90 days, if I went over there, I'd have to watch TV. This is fucking crazy because I was just thinking about this. I would have to watch TV with her and the grandmother, not to change the story. That's how fucking back of mind I am. And, Nick, you were talking about your mind. You are how old now? 55. Do you write things down? I, I'm starting. I write my whole day down. Yeah. Like, my whole day has to be written down, Nick. If not, it's not going to work. Like, if my day is not written down, it's not going to work. I, like, I don't have to know where I got to be at 8 a.m. I got to do this at 12. I got to call this guy. I got to call that guy. Up here, I got to write things I'm doing for the week. Like, I have a notebook like this. If not, Nick, it gets fucking thrown away. But this guy just died. No, no, this is notes. For, yeah, this guy just died. Right. What's this kid's name when we were kids? And he fucking, he got in the way of everybody I wanted to fuck. There were two people who I still hate after 50 fucking years. <laughs> okay, there's two motherfuckers that fucked me up when I was a kid. There was three, but I forgave the third. The first motherfucker that fucked me up when I was a kid was that fucking Donny Osmond with his bullshit. He sang that one bad apple, and then he fucking got the TV show. The girl I was in love with, this girl I'm talking to you about, she had to stay home every fucking Friday night to watch fucking Donny and Marie because she was in love with Donny. I was ready to shoot Donny in the head like a Kennedy. Do you understand? Me? <laughs> he was getting in between me and my fucking romance. The other guy who got in between my shit was that dude who just died, that dirty son of a bitch. The Partridge family, that cocksucker. Oh, that guy. He fucked up a lot of relationships for me when I was 12. I used to want to bang people. He fucked up more shit for me than the love boat. The love boat used to always <laughs> fuck my game up. Because at 9 o'clock, you'd get all mugged up to them and swap spit. Then the love oh, boat would come God. on, and they'd freeze up on you. And then you have to play dead possum for an hour. And by 11, the mother would show up and playing cards. And you went home with a fucking cold nut because of the love boat. Because of some midget on a boat and shit. <laughs> cold nut. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, when you're on the 12 and you got that nut going... And you go home with cold nut when you don't evacuate, when you don't ejaculate, whatever 
When you're like under 13 and you get horned they call up, blue balls now. they call it blue balls, and, and it actually happens. At one time, my one nut swelled oh, up. It hurt so bad. Oh, my God. My one nut swelled up when I was about 13 because I had a nut. I was ready to nut in somebody. I was ready to do something. And the, and the cops came. Something happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to run home. Oh, and your come back fires. When you're a kid and you get all fired up like that, that thing's ready to shoot out at like a missile. Sure. I, I don't know what we were doing. I was making out with a girl. We were about to dry hump, and the father came home. So I had to run out the back door. Bro, the next day, I woke up, and I had a pain in my dick. And the following day, I woke up, and my nut was swollen. I'll never forget, my mother fell asleep watching the TV on the edge of the bed, right? The TV was on like 6 in the morning, and she's passed out. And I go up to her, and I go, Mima. And I wake her up, and she goes, okay, what happened? And I go, Look at my nuts. <laughs> Tell me if something's weird. Cause <laughs> I must have been fucking 12. And I'll never forget, like, she just picked them up like a mom would do. Jesus. And she goes, you're all right. Get the pass off. You don't go pay your uncle. And I go, no, 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 nothing happened. That means that you get you get hit in the nut or something by mistake. Uh -oh. And that I'll never forget that, waking her up at, like, 6 in the morning, going, Ma, I got to show you something, because it was with your, dark. With your nuts in her face? It was about three inches away. It's a little close. Fucking crazy, man. What? what is, <laughs> some shit, boy. That's some crazy shit. Yeah, when you're a young kid and you don't nut. I but, remember my first hickey. This chick called Vielka. She was like half black, half Puerto Rican. Yeah, only Puerto Rican chicks gave you hickey. Yeah, I didn't know I what it was. When you were kids, the only chicks that would dare give you a hickey were Puerto Rican chicks. And you oh, could give them a hickey amazing. if they didn't have a brother. And I panicked. If they had a brother, you couldn't give them a hickey. I and put shit. a fucking band aid on. All my friends said, put some makeup on. Because I thought that my mother. And if you hung out with the brother and you were fucking the sister, you better not have a hickey from the sister either. Yeah. But my mother ripped the fucking band aid right off like an idiot. It was something. I mean, the girl was amazing. Like, I didn't know what she was doing. She blew me away. She was out of my league. She was so fucking powerful and sexy. I was like, wow. I was like, I, I never saw her again because she was so good. I just remembered her name, Vioka. My mother hit me in the fucking head and my father looked and goes, oh, that was it. He didn't, he nothing. You know, my mom got mad at that shit, man. I you got caught? Yeah, but my mom, I put a Band-Aid on it. My oh, mother, you got caught for a hickey? Yeah, for a hickey. What was the first time you got caught shooting a stominky in somebody? No, 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 you? no. I never, I mean. Your mother never caught you No, he never really caught me in, in that, you know, <coughs> in the act. Close call, you know, but never like in the act, you know. With that girl, I used to dry hump her in my bedroom. I used to drive my mother crazy. If she was over, my mom would make me leave the bedroom door open. You can't disrespect me in my fucking Right, house. that's when I got in trouble with my that parents. That was one of my mom was His fucking those. first girlfriend that I had and shut the door. I said, my parents don't like that. Don't you understand? She was a little fucking Bhutan, and, and you know, she liked to shut the door. I said, What did Bhutan you. mean? A whore. A oh, my goodness. Yeah, you know, she oh. was fucking more advanced than me. She was only 15. How dare she? Well, you know, she had nice titties. I was a titty guy. <laughs> it was a different fucking world. Man. It really okay. was, you know. It was so exciting. I had the little stereo with the eight track player. I thought I was the shit. Victoria Principal on my door. <laughs> Remember Victoria Principal? It was in Dallas. The girl Jill Goodacre. When I lived in Boulder, she was a big Boulder girl. She had gone to school with my ex wife. And uh, this was way before she did it, Harry Connick Jr. I think I, I was leaving Boulder, no, even a little before that. But she was really smart. She was a Victoria's Secret, and she took all that money and bought real estate in Boulder at that time. That's Jill, she, her and her father. What was her name? Jill Goodacre. Oh, okay. Now she's married to Harry Connick Jr. She married him? Oh. But she was a real fucking Victoria's Secret model. Let me see what she looked like. Put her up in her heyday. This is fucking Jill Goodacre in her fucking heyday out of Boulder, Jill Colorado. Wait, out of Fairview motherfucking high school, Boulder High, I'm not sure. You know what? I never knew her. I can't. I, never, I saw her once with her dad. <coughs> but she was already, by that time she had security. 
the whole fucking deal or what seemed like security. She married Harry, huh? She married Harry. Wait till you see Jill Goodacre. Once you see her, you'll remember. She was big when we were kids. Big. Now she's old. But put... uh, Oh, I know the face. No, no, she don't. No, you don't. That's not what she looked like. Keep going. This one over here? Yeah, keep going. Keep going. See how they're going to go into early Jill Goodacre. Just go into Jill Goodacre 19 fucking 87 and see what you get with Victoria's Secret. Put Victoria's Secret next to that motherfucker. Oh, shit. And put Joe. See, it's even, you don't even have to type it in. Now she's That's all That's the fucking... first thing that comes up. She's a mom now. She's our um, fucking yeah, age. Yeah, I know. But Boy. this. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Right there with the white lacing. Yeah. That was her, right? Keep going down, keep going down. That's her too, but keep going down right there. That Click one? onto that. Make you make it bigger? That was her oh. when we were kids. Mod on I me. Mean, look at that. Get up. That's what she looked like when we were kids, dog. Just stunning. You know, she beautiful. was fucking stunning. I mean, that's that. just beautiful. Look at that. that comple- she was a kid. Oh, my God. Completely natural. There's nothing that fake. That was it. That's co- that, look at that. That's the no, best of meat on Colorado, it. dog. I mean, that's not like just skinny. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you who she grew up with. Oh. Let me tell you who she grew up with. It's going to drive you crazy. Oh. The Gondra's ex. At that time, there was three fucking powerhouse families in Boulder. Jill Goodacre, the Gondra's ex, and Kevin Call. Kevin Call was real well noted because he was the guy that played for the Baltimore Colts. And he was well known for going up against Gastineau. Oh, really? Gastineau and Clowns? Kevin Call was a big motherfucker. And at that time, I was getting stolen cigarettes. And his, father a, <laughs> and his father had a fucking roach coach, and I would sell him cigarettes. You know, I would make a little money on him in the cigarettes. But at that time, when I lived in Boulder, it was Jill Goodacre, fucking She's Kevin beautiful. Call. No, no, no. She's a gorgeous this girl. Was, bro, she was the face of Victoria's How Secret. How old is she today? She's got to be. Lee, type it up. Harry? How old is she now? <laughs> she don't look bad. I mean. No, she's a mom. She probably yeah, got eight mom. kids. Hey, kids. How old is she today? How old is she? Jill Goodacre. 53. Yeah, she's yeah. our age. Yeah, 64. She's 53. Married. And she's still an attractive woman. Yeah, she's not my ex-wife's age. Where did it say she go to high school? She was born in Lubbock, but I don't know what high school. Let's see. How long are they married? Go to Wikipedia right there. Mm. They've been married probably... She was still fucking... The real deal. Jesus. She did some movies? But grew up in Boulder, Colorado. The daughter, a real estate broker. Uh, I don't want to say the father's name. Sculptures, whatever. Native of Lubbock. And besides, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. With her mother, Goodacre, married in 1994. In a Catholic ceremony in St. Catherine. She's the real deal, guys. Yeah. That's beauty, man. There was no issues. There was no drama with this broad. She came out the pipe. How long was she a model for Victoria's Secret? I can't read it from here. I mean, she was Victoria's Secret in 1986. 80. In 1985, I met somebody who asked me if I knew who Joe Goodacre was. So that's how big she was already in 85. And she it just was, says the 80s. So she was two years younger than me. So if I was 21, she was nine fucking teen. Yeah, that, she's spotless. She's spotless, beautiful. Yeah. clean. No, no, I saw it. There's nothing. No drama. Yeah, no. This girl married. She took over the world. She bought real estate with her father at a young age. She bought all that shit up in Boulder, dog. So when that body got chubby, she had property to sell off and make a ton of money. She had that money way before the the whatever earthquakes in California. That's when everybody moved there. It all happened after 94 in North Glen. Right. That's when half of California from up there moved to Boulder. They said, that's it. That's when Boulder changed completely. As I was leaving Boulder, they were already coming in. Coming in. They were buying up property. All right, I want to give a shout out Beautiful. to my girl Meg, Aaron Michael Stein, Wesley Day, 
Stephen Krypton, the Dakota Trammell, John Lemon, Scott Cunningham, Michael Horn, Bob Salaman, and Mr. Ten, Mr. Ten Steel. I know you're going through some hard times. You know I love you, cocksucker. And that's it. You know me, dog. Flip, flap, and go. <laughs> you brought the fucking sauce tonight. I got the fucking around. I thought you guys were going to eat. Then you told me 8 o'clock. I didn't know what was going on, so hey, I'm happy. Fuck it. I would take some home. Lee's got something to eat tonight. And Lee yeah. also brought your donuts. He brought your Lee, donuts. Gentlemen. Please take them home. I'll eat the Lee, whole box. He brought your real deal. Look at this shit, Lee, which you got to deal with tonight. What kind are they? Glazed? Chocolate. You don't even want to know. Chocolate. You don't even want to know. That's the fucking best, baby. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Those are the ones that killed Weight Watchers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for later. How time. many is one point? How many is how many points? Oh, one one of those is ten points. Uh, Easy. It's good, but you want one, Lee? I want the whole box. With a glass, with a glass of milk and the honeymooners. Yeah. Oh, please take it home by oh, yourself. You honeymooners. Home, you get home at ten to eleven from work and it's cold out and shit. Shit. You sit down, ma. You awake? Oh man. She's sleeping. You go in the living room. You go. You fucking get some coffee. Then you look on top of the kitchen and right next to the toaster. There's some Entenmann's pound cake. Oh God! With some Entenmann's donuts, and you're like, mm, the pound cake. Pound is cake is. If, if I eat this, I better have to go back to the store and get some by the time she wakes up. Yeah. Because she's gonna wake up with this crumb bun in mind. Oh man, it's not like a good crumb cake too. Oh, the Entenmann's one. Fucking the square. The square. The, the square. The square oh, my crumb God. cake. That's what I And a cup push. of coffee. Jesus Christ! Are you kidding me? You can't even eat that. No, now. at my age, I can't eat. No, I haven't yeah, eaten one of those in seven years. I gotta change years. my diet if I'm gonna live longer. No, I haven't had one of those. I see him, Marie T. Got him, dog. Oh, they God. got the regular ones and the I used old. To get one down the shore. Apple crumb. This bakery called Muller's would would blow you in the water. Unbelievable. I don't even need the crumb. Just that glazed. Listen, Entenmann's was throwing heat thirty years ago. They had a chocolate donut that had chocolate balls on it with powdered sugar on it that you would eat it and you look like fucking a mess. But Lee, they were so... Let me tell you something. There was a lot of good chocolate chip cookies when I was growing up. But the first time I had the Entenmann chocolate cookie, my heart stopped because they were soft. You like them soft? They were the first ones that were soft. Yeah. Like, I'm a Chips Ahoy dude. Me too. I'm a Chips Ahoy dude till the end of time. I like that one company's chocolate chip cookies for a while growing up but I'm a Chips Ahoy type of dude too. Chips Ahoy was my thing that was my thing yeah. too I like, the, I like the crunchy kind the crispy kind what's going on Nick the Turo alright buddy you, how you, you, you feel a thousand things going on talk to me alright I'm gonna do a mini series next month in Italy you got it yeah I got it it's called so, the, the Name of the Rose my first time working in Italy with my brother John how many weeks in Italy for I'm gonna be there two weeks in February two weeks in March a week in April and a week in May. <laughs> Are you done with the Spike Lee movie? I'm done with the Spike Lee, The Black Klansman. That was a lot of fun. How, how, many, how many collaborations? How many times you work collaborations? Uh, like fuck five Mike? times, maybe. You've done five of his movies. Yeah, he, he's like he said it in front of everybody. Nick's been with me. This is like what number five, Nick? I was supposed to do the um, what was it? The bank robbery movie, but I didn't do that one. Um, but I did Jungle Fever, Mo Better. Malcolm X, and uh, I think one other one, too, I forget. And then this one. Four or five, I don't know. But uh, it was good to work with Spike again. I started with him, so it was kind of fucking weird. <coughs> you know, we were reminiscing. We were doing a lot of the lines from the old movies. We were doing Jungle Fever. We were doing Mo Better. Spike's, um, you know, he's, he's a good dude. He's a good he's, he, man. He's the first guy to give me my start, you know, the first guy that put me on the map. So it's kind of, you know. It's kind of fitting to go back sometimes to who you started with, you know. Um, there were some good people, interesting people in the movie. It's this guy that's kind of uh, Adam Driver. He's an interesting guy. And a few other people. He's kind of hot right now. Um, Denzel's son is in it. And he's on Ballers. And uh, yeah, it's a new year. It's a new year. So I don't know. I think, I think it's going to be a good year, uh, you know. You optimistic? Yeah, I don't know why. I have a good feeling. I'm a bit optimistic too that the acting. Yeah, maybe, maybe this like year. Pick, there's a lot of fucking. You know, you and I talk about it a lot on the phone, and I don't 
pick at you for this. You, you're a great kid, but I have my frustrations also, you know, and you're like, the people that are working can't even act half of them. You know, they, they can't even, you know, half the people I know. that That's I see doing comedic comedy drives me crazy. aren't even fucking funny. So, okay, you don't want to give me the work. That's fine. Least funnier than these fucking people. Mm -hmm. How'd you do the other night? Uh, pretty good. I did my, everything new. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the fourth wall fun. where fucking comedy is king. You want to be a comedian? Go to the fourth wall, all right? And give it a shot. You just go up there in front of a bunch of comedians. There's no alcohol. There's no fucking glitz. It's not Madison Square Garden. It's fighting for your fucking life. You do comedy in front of comics, bro. You pay five dollars, you get five minutes. Like a savage, old wow. school style. Did you used to go too long? Like it was going well, and then I just like the last minute. I they, I was going. I just didn't. I should have just stopped like the minute earlier. Like at the light, I started getting a little bit too cocky. I guess. And you did good for four minutes. I feel like five. I did think. you do the same jokes as last time? No, or did I didn't. You switch it up. All new stuff. Good for you, Lee. Congratulations. Well, it, it was just. It was just. It, it, I was gonna do some most of some of the old stuff, but. With this guy Eric, who was hosting, and I just were talking earlier, so we just, I just did so, start talking about that. And Can I tell you people something? Fun. Again, no mean to interrupt you, Lee. I love you like a brother. The night that, bro, one night I was taping a special, and people knew who was in the house, mm -hmm. and they started clapping for him to come on stage. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. Nine out of ten people wouldn't have come out on stage. This poor kid went up there and took the stage. And I knew that this would have been easier. And I, I never intended to get him up at the stage. I knew that he had a fear of going up in the stage. But I, I learned that by tricking somebody into stage, it's a lot easier than when somebody tells you, and they go, you know what, Nick? Like if a kid ever comes up to you and goes, Uncle Nick, can I talk to you? Listen, man. I want to be a stand-up comic. I just don't know what to do. I'm scared to go up the first time. Trick him. Just go, okay, fine. Send him home and call the club. And put him up, sign him up, and then take him up there to watch your friend who's a comedian. And let them call his name. He's got no choice. All that shit he's got, he'll have to run up there and do it. And he'll think of the material to say, and he'll get it over with, and you helped him out. You created a monster now. Now he'll continue doing it because it was that easy. But when people think about doing something, they fucking falter. And they won't get on stage the first time. He got forced to go on stage. He had no choice. He knew that either he went on stage or they would harass him later on. Right, yeah, pretty much. I, I, he knew. He was in a tight... I didn't even consider not doing it. And it really works, bro. The best way to teach a kid how to swim is to throw him off a boat, right? Yeah, or yeah. There's no other way but to, to get in there. And that's how it was proof. Lee never dreamed of going up on stage. We had this discussion a million fucking times. He never dreamed going up on stage. No, I, I, I love to stand up, but I never thought I'd be... On stage. And right before I did the That's special, terrifying. he was started fucking around up in Reseda. Like Is that the first time you got on stage? Yeah, Reseda, yeah. <laughs> you started fucking around in Reseda, and I go, look at fucking Lee going on stage. With <laughs> because sometimes you got to push people. Like, come on, that's your dream. Lee never discussed it. So he went up on stage, and it's so amazing that now he goes down there by himself. I had a spot of flappers. I left him there. You know, most guys would have tipped. He fucking stayed. He stayed and finished out the night like a gentleman and fucking, did you, did you, listen, man, the best thing out of all that shit is watching those comics. Well, yeah, it was interesting watching some people just kind of go for it, like, like, kind of like I'm doing, like, I have, I have a couple, I have a list on my phone of things that I, that spark the idea, but I don't, I don't have, like, a written out joke, but there were a couple people going down the list who were... Who are like would even sound state like in two weeks when I figure out this middle part, it'll be good. So they, it, it's kind of exciting to think about getting to that part. Like they were nobody bombed. A joke. Nobody really bombed no. in my eyes, Nick. Like nobody really bombed. Uh, uh, it was weird because I thought about this when I was driving. Nobody bombed in my eyes. Like I'm gonna continue going there, but nobody really bombed in my eyes. 
because I know what the feeling is at that level. I know what the feeling is at that level. It's fucking horrible. Right. You know, I'd be much rather be at the comedy store, at the improv, and at the Laugh Factory. They're at a fucking place next to a Seven Eleven, across the police station. Yeah. You can't even smoke a joint outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, and it's a beautiful fucking place. I love the place next to a sushi place. You can have sushi, and go in there and do comedy and shit, and leave, sign your name, go eat sushi. It's perfect. But it's like a real like. You know what, bro? It took me back to where I used to be. Right, where you like started. I went home last night. I couldn't sleep. You know why? Because I started watching old fucking stand up from what inspired me to be, okay. be those guys. They got you going there. Yeah. So I put Kennison on. I put I put Andrew on. I put on Bill Hicks. I put on fucking uh, somebody else. I watched last night. Lenny Clark. I watched a little while. And dog, it lights your fire. It takes you back to where those guys were. Right. So in those days, yeah, I was bombing like a motherfucker when I was at that level in New York. Did you? Oh please. I was. A, I would call places before I got there to tell them I was coming to bomb the place. Like, what What would your act consist of back then? Fucking horror. Yeah. Total horror. How long did you go up for? Seven minutes. Was it bad? Yes. Thinking that. Thinking what kept that you going? Desperation. Yeah. Nothing else. I knew that if I didn't keep doing it, I would fall apart for sure. Like this was it. This was. But I mean, my you life. bombed like a bunch of times. Oh my God! From I bombed from ninety one to about ninety three and a half. So what changed? <laughs> when did you find it? When did it? When did it change for you? I mean, like, what happened? It changed, like, in 94. And then it evolved again, like, in 95. Then by 97, I was on to something. They just started to feel like you was on to something. But I wasn't ready for nothing. I was on to something, but I wasn't ready for nothing. But you wasn't ready. There was no way. I had a polished 10 minutes if I had to. I didn't know what I was saying. Did anybody talk to you? Did anybody like, you know, guys, other guys you respected, maybe? No, because the stage presence and the energy was always there. Oh, that was there. So that substituted everything else. Uh -huh. That overpowered everything else. It hid the weaknesses. Which was what? The writing. The writing. Uh, the, the act was from the heart. Right, that was good. That was genuine. So the act was from the heart. Right. So people you know? like that about you. It was so funny. I watched a clip from. Do you Kenneth. have any footage of you like early? No, it's not. There's one person who's got my footage. I'd love to see you early, of, Joey. It's me, him, and Carlos Mencia, and I'm the host of the show, and it is just god awful. I had to do five minutes, and it is probably. But you were probably always genuine, you know. I think that I, I'll never forget the first time I went. That's a what class. I like about you. Yeah, I took a class, and the guy said to me, "You're on to something. Your stage presence is fucking great for that level. Like you're really on to something. I know who you are when you walk up on stage." I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Right. I was so desperate by '94 that I was like, I was prepared to do the journey. Like I was ready to be that guy in a car that just traveled in between five states and did comedy at broken down bars. I didn't want nobody calling me. Don't reach out, Nick, because I'm not going to return your calls. I just want to do comedy and left alone. That's yeah. it. I was so heartbroken and I was so, uh, you know, at that point that this is all I wanted to do. And also I ended up in Seattle with a stripper. Oh, man. And next year, I'm, I'm up there for a year and a half. And all of a sudden, I'm living in a fucking... Yeah. Me and the stripper are living in a fucking RV on Fairfax Boulevard in between Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard. Did you know that? The no. first three nights I lived here, I lived in an RV in between Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard where oh. uh, there's a... No. Anyway... Right there on that corner, facing towards Hollywood Boulevard, where you make a fucking left to go on to Laurel Canyon. We were parked right there. Jesus Christ. The first three nights. Take showers in there, get dressed, 
and go to the comedy store. We had the truck, the car parked behind it on a fucking trailer. Like, you towed the fucking trailer? Right. We towed the car behind us from <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> oh, man. And we had the same experience in San Francisco. I was doing comedy. I stopped to do comedy, and she went to park the RV, and she's driving the RV, and then she's going down the block. I see the two back tires oh, fall off the oh, RV, shit. fall off the RV, and the RV falls on its back, and she's just dragging it with the fucking car. Oh, my God. Oh, my God is right. Why'd you wind up in Seattle? I went to Michigan. Listen, listen, this is fucked up. One of my mentors in Denver, his name was Todd Jordan, a very dear friend. I still love him to death. A great fucking writer. And I used to look at his resume every night. He had just won 1987 HBO's Comic of the Year. This kid was somebody. He was in People Magazine as the top... 25 people to watch under 25. I mean, it was fucking amazing. Yeah. Amazing writer. Just uh, He just fell in love in Denver and took a corporate job as a comic for a, one, a phone company or something. They paid him great money, and that's what he chose to do. He would write for comics long distance, like Dennis Miller at that time and stuff, where the TV show. Yeah. But he mentored me, man. And I would look at his resume and dream of the clubs he played at. And he had this club in Detroit, Michigan called Joey's. That was it. Joey's Comedy Club. And at that time, they were in Livonia, Belleville, and wherever the fuck I went. And there was three clubs. And we were talking one day. Oh, shit. This is what happened. He had a weekend in the Bahamas to be a comic, and he asked me to open for him. And I was supposed to meet him in Florida. And after his show in Florida Saturday night, he had appendicitis. He had to get rushed to the hospital. And they had to take his appendix out. So the weekend in the Bahamas got canceled. I couldn't go without him. So I was fucked. So he goes, how can I make it up to you? And I go, bro, don't worry about it. He goes, no, no, I want to make it up to you. He goes, pick a club and I'll get you in there. I'll make a phone call and get you in there. Out of all the clubs, I picked fucking Joey's in Detroit, a suburb of Detroit. And I fucking, I'm so excited. This is my second comedy club. I was already working in Baltimore. I go to fucking Detroit. I, I leave from Colorado. Nick, between me and you, no lie, I had 30 bucks. I had maybe 20 and quarters. And in those days, all I would eat were veggie and cheese sandwiches on white from Subway. I would take a six inch and eat one for breakfast and take the other six, six inch and eat one for lunch and then for dinner, whatever happened, happened. I would go into a supermarket and shoplift salami. I was a fucking savage. Jeez. And I went to fucking Detroit and I walked into the pizza place where the guy was a manager. His name was Ed Belaska. You remember this shit. This is 1995, May man. of 1995. And I tell this pizza guy, hey man, I'm Joey Diaz. I'm the feature act this week. He goes, what? <laughs> he goes, Diaz. who? He goes, who the fuck are you? I go, I'm Joey Diaz, dog. I'm the feature act this week. Come on. You better, you know, I'm, I'm like, come on, man. He's like, I don't know nothing. It's Wednesday night, asshole. You're not supposed to be here till Thursday. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, Thir Wednesday night. I go, is there a hotel? Yeah, Thursday night. Not tonight. You're on your own. Have a good night. I was like, God. Damn. Wow. And I fucking drove a few blocks, and I saw like a Holiday Inn that had a big parking lot. And I went in there, and I took my blanket. I was prepared. I was going to sleep in there. I had like a joint and a half. Where are you going to sleep? In the car? In the car. In the parking lot of a Holiday Inn. And then if you're slick, in those days, I was so much on the road where I figured out. Wow. In the mornings, you hung out by the back door of the hotel. And you may believe you were smoking. Yeah. And if you had like a little travel bag, when somebody walked out, you'd take it in and go to the gym area. This was, you prayed at the gym area. And there was always like a bathroom in the back. You could go in the bathroom and freshen up. There was always scams on the road. You always figured out there was always a fucking hotel girl you knew 
who would fucking let you go in the back and fucking feed your dog and fucking wash your face and comb your hair and take a shower in the sink. Jesus. There's always that shit on the road. 95. <sighs> Living in the backyard of a fucking hotel, my friend. I was uh, doing NYPD Blue then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like my a God, and you were uh, like a doctor. And, and here <coughs> I you was were in the parking lot. In the parking lot. It's hard to. And he, could, he pays me back and he goes, Listen, do you have a suit? I go, Yes. He goes, You're opening up for Tony Bennett at the restaurant tonight. Go to the fucking hotel and check yourself in. But Tony Bennett? Hey, Tony Bennett would do a show at the Fox Theater and then he would go to Joey's and go upstairs, downstairs to the eat. He would right. eat after the show. And then for the family and a few friends, yeah. he would sing two or three little songs, La Cancionette. And nice people, guy, Tony. And people would go crazy. Ooh. And you would open for him? They would say, do like 10 minutes, be tasteful. And I was horrible. You were bad? I ate a bag of dicks, dog. Really? Oh, I went back to the hotel room and almost cried. <laughs> but it was too late already. So I got up Thursday morning, got the free breakfast at the hotel. Thank God. You ate whatever they had. Whatever they had was good enough. I'll eat whatever. And a lot of you them. got pancakes, I'll take 10 of them. You got <laughs> fucking powdered eggs, I'll eat the eggs. White bread, rye bread, I eat the And you would try to sneak shit for later. Like you would take fucking, like that was how I lived, guys. It's hard you know, to believe. Hard uh, to believe. Sausages, whatever. And you would take them up to your room and just stay in your room. And that Thursday fucking night, I go to the club. I'm ready to do my comedy. Yeah. And I'm on stage four fucking minutes and the chick heckles me. Who heckles you? Some oh, fucking, fucking chick. chick. And I looked down and I thought it was Kelly LeBrock, dog. This chick was fucking beautiful. And the next thing you know, we started talking after the show. And next thing you know, the other comedian comes up to me and goes, Oh, you met her. She's very nice. She's got a, a, a situation. Tell him. And she goes, Well, I'm in a situation. My boyfriend stole my car and he had a place to stay and I, I was wondering if I could stay in your hotel room. Like, this could only happen to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, and I'm looking at this broad and I'm like, this is, has to be a setup here. And I go, sure, I got two beds, whatever you want. And on the walk to the hotel, I even say to her, listen, you know I'm a savage, right? I'm gonna, that. Yeah, I'm going to attack you in the middle of the night. And she started giggling. She thought I was fucking around with her. And the whole night we were in separate beds, but I kept torching. Like, Come on, give me a little taste. <laughs> it's just you and me. Oh my god! And the next day she actually woke up and she goes, "You want that taste? You got to earn it. Give me yeah. a two-hour ride, and I'll give you a little taste of something." And I said, well, "I need a down payment right now. You got to do sucking sukalaminko or whatever." <laughs> <laughs> she tore your bone. No, she drove naked. She drove. She, she got naked as I drove. And I, and I would tell her what to do. Play with your monkey a little bit. Stretch it out. Stretch it out like Stretch a fish. Stretch it out, yeah. really? While you were driving? Oh, yeah. Scratch it and put it by my nose. Oh, Let me sniff shit. it off your fingers like an animal. Did you get hard when you were driving? Oh, I, I busted a nut in my <laughs> pants. That's when you just bust. You just, you just fall <laughs> apart. You can't even oh, break. Oh, my God. You keep hoping the deer don't run out there because you can't put the brake because your left leg went fucking stuck. She's nude while you're driving. Oh, my God. It was a f I couldn't believe it was oh happening. Oh, my God. And, for, and it had been warming up to that. Was it in the day or at night? This is fucking the next morning. We had to check out the hotel. No. I was still doing comedy that Friday night. Oh, my God. So that day I drove all the way up there, and there was drama. There was drama. She couldn't get into a house, so I had to help her break in through the back. And then she got her clothes, but the boyfriend stole her house, her car keys, and her wallet. So she still had no place to go. Oh, so now shit. she was too upset to suka la mink. How can you make a chick that's crying suka la mink? Only look, Harvey could do that. How'd she look good? Oh, she was beautiful. Big bush? She was bad. At that time, I hadn't seen. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah, she didn't have a bush. <laughs> so finally, she goes, do you mind if I come back to the hotel with you? She's like, can I come back to the hotel with you? No. I'm going to leave you out in the street. Besides, you owe me a piece of ass. You ain't going nowhere till the debt is paid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she came back to the hotel with me. You know what, bro? We became good friends and shit. Joey should write a book, shouldn't he? The boyfriend hey. kept calling the hotel all night. Where the fuck is she? She belongs to me. I'm going to come down. And then she told me the whole story. She, she was 25. and she was. Oh, yeah. 
he was 51 oh, and really? she was fucking him because he put it through college oh. but she tried to break up with him now he was so trying he was like to a sue daddy. her he was a sugar daddy sugar type daddy. situation yeah. so that's why he stole the car the car belonged to the mother and oh, man. it was in the mother's name so now she was busted so she stayed Friday in the hotel the drama. Me, Saturday and then Sunday on the way home I dropped her off at the house by that time I had given her 22 sukalaminks <laughs> and 18 <laughs> stabs sukalaminks and so you, you know got what? a little taste. And I, you know what happened, bro? What? what happens after you get divorced? Like, I got divorced and I was brokenhearted. <clears throat> and I had met some women, you know, but she was the closest I met to somebody I could hook up with. And I overlooked the stripping and the sugar daddy because she had great pussy. And as a man, sometimes you overlook everything. <clears throat> Even though you know it's going to be dangerous. But you tell yourself you're going to do it differently and she's not going to suck nobody else's dick. And right. Even though you're a seasoned man, right. you know she's a professional dick sucker. She, <laughs> she strips already. <laughs> she, you, you've known her for three days and you already know she's a fucking nude stripper yeah. in a college town. Yeah. And she had a sugar daddy for four years during college. Yeah. And this guy was no fucking Prince Machiavelli. Right. You know, he was right. a horror show. That's why he was paying a 21-year-old girl to blow him Sure. It was a fucking horror show when she was telling me. Wow. And you know, by that time, I thought I was a seasoned man. I had never heard those things. I was in fucking shock when she told me that shit. Yeah. Wow. It was crazy, but I still fell in love with her. You can. I, dog, I dropped her off in Lansing, Michigan, and I drove all the way back to Boulder, Colorado. I wasn't home two days, and she called and said, I'm coming to Boulder to see you. Forget about it then. I fell in love. She had there was an opening in my heart. She just slipped right in. I didn't care if her pussy was dirty. I didn't care if she had VD. She was beautiful and she was gonna be mine, or at least I thought. It took her maybe sixty days to start fucking being an animal again. Right. I ended up in jail. It was a fucking horror show. But oh, four man. years with this fucking crazy chick. Yeah? Yeah, we know we just spoke the other day for New Year's. She called me, <laughs> I called her back. Jesus Christ. Listen, we remain friends. Things happen in your life. Yeah. Well, She's the reason why I got to LA. She's the one that when well, I told her. Well, you have some her, connection. If you're still talking, or maybe you guys actually. Listen, we broke up here, like after six months, and we knew it was it was not the end. Yeah. We ended up fist fighting to the death on fucking uh, Sunset and fucking Gardner one day. Yeah. She had the mace and I had a salami in my that hand. That kind of thing. Yeah, it was one of That's those bad. at the end. Yeah, yeah, so thank God I ended up in prison. Thank God she didn't mace me in the eyes. I ended up like fucking yeah. Jim Jones's cousin. <laughs> Jim and thank Jones. God, look, we remain good friends. Hey. She even said to me, she came to see me this last time, brought her boyfriend and her kids. How she looked today? You know what, bro? You met her. Did she I? She came to the set of the longest yard. She came to the set? And she had the baby. I don't remember. Those fucking that that was two thousand four, so the kid's thirteen now. She brought him to the fucking my show in Tampa. Wow! They came to the hotel and I talked to them for a little while. You know, the longest show it, it's it's been a while. That's a long time. And so much happened during the longest show. It was so exciting. It's a lot of it's a blur now, but there was a lot going on during the longest show. You know, uh, Joy, my friend, my dear friend Joy Filato called. Yesterday, and he goes, Hey, I didn't hear from you from Christmas. I, I called you. He goes, I called you too. I go, Joey, it happens. He goes, Coco, the other day I turned the TV on in the middle of the night, and the longest yard was starting. I watched the whole fucking thing. And he goes, I gotta ask you something. How much fucking fun did you have shooting that? The question comes up. Con I'm supposed All to do, time. I'm supposed to All do Steve, time. whatever his podcast. And I called them, and I set it up, and I had to cancel because the baby got something happened with the school, and I was supposed to reschedule it, but the holidays were coming, and we discussed what we were going to talk about. And he goes, listen, if you come on, I've had some other guys come on. I'd rather you not talk about the longest show. I go, no, we have to talk about the night you knocked on my door and fucking wanted the booze from inside my fucking refrigerator because they have... Steve who? Austin. Oh, Steve Austin. That little crew he hung out with, yeah. those little wrestlers and shit. Yeah, they were drinking so much that first they locked up the bar. Wasn't there a crazy little Hindu guy? 
that used to hang out. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Oh. I turned him on oh. to somebody. Listen to me. Listen. No, no. I turned him we on to somebody. We got to tell the story. Okay, and this listen. fucking little Hindu. Listen, no, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, so. Oh, my There's this fucking God. guy in the movie. The big fucking Hindu. No, not the big guy. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell this story because. Okay. All right. This, <laughs> the, what's the big guy's name? Halip. Dalip. Well, Dalip, because he was whatever, they gave him like this fucking assistant. And he was this little Hindu guy that, between you and me, if I had to bet 100 bucks, I said the guy bet it, bet it on the other side. I honestly thought that he was 100 percent gay if you came to me and said to me listen your little sister has to sit with somebody for an hour i would definitely leave him with that person so through the longest yard we're talking to this fucking broad on the set blah 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 blah, blah. one thing's lets to another she's talking to me lobo and and nick a lot a lot a lot a lot and she's Definitely talking to Nick, and she's talking to me, and we all become friends. So, the chick was like a cosmic masseuse or something like that. So, fucking, <laughs> she needed a ride to the airport <laughs> or something. <laughs> Did he get rub downs? Yes. He gave rub down. Oh, that's the story. Yeah. Yes. He gave rub that, down. Now, this, I, listen, again, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and if gentlemen. I got a yardstick, I'm betting the guy is 100% gay. But I guess he told the chick, I'll drive you, but you got to come up to my room first. He pulled the Harvey. He said, you got to come up to the hotel room first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know if this is the same Brajol we're talking yes, about. Yes, she was a cute girl, but, you know. Is it Valley Girl? Yes, yeah, some chick. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew the girl. I, I I know that, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, I, I'm trying to, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, the funny thing is that, like I said, we're all in the same hotel. So something happens that she's gonna give him a, Nick a massage. Says, Nick's trying to no. I'm trying to get rid of her. Nick's oh. trying to be a nice guy right. and go here. Here's fifty bucks. Do us a favor. She's looking for a ride to the hotel. I can't do it. You can't no to the to the airport. She was leaving town or something. He lured her into the room. Right. And what happens next? That's though? not a good word, Joey. <laughs> oh my god. No. Oh my god. Go ahead, drop it on. So next thing you know. I don't know nothing. I go back to my room. I'm in love with the movie Man on Fire. I'm already That's into right. the hotel. That's what we talked about. I'm, I'm already into the hotel. $1,510 fucking movies. Every time I got that movie, it was $10. I would pay my bill every week. It was $80 in fucking Man on Fires. And those motherfuckers kept charging me. I hope he the hotel that burns movie. down. I don't know what happens, but I got a call 10 minutes later from Nick the tour. And he goes, Joey. Have you seen the fucking Hindu dude? <laughs> yeah, this motherfucker. And I go, what are you talking about? I, you know, we were all together. I, yeah. I saw him with you, and he goes, yeah. He took the chick up to his room, <laughs> and then he told them he was a masseuse. He was a Hindu masseuse. Right. And next thing you know, he started rubbing it. He went into a trance or something. He yeah. Started, he started getting creepy. And started started getting real fucking crazy. <laughs> Hands trying to go up her ass and everything, oh. and and the oh. girl fucking was, you know, she was petrified. Oh, I felt bad because I was like, I, I thought this guy was innocent. Oh, we thought I thought he was tw dog. I'm telling you, if I had to give you, I don't know how it thing. ended, but it wasn't. No, it wasn't good. She it ran wasn't out. Good. She ran. She didn't call the she cops. Said she didn't call the cops. He was fucking. You I know. think I had to scold him. I yeah, think you, I, you said something. To I think I said when so, you saw him, he was all yeah, sweating. He turned fucking. He was all full of sweat. <laughs> I was like, I had to fucking tell a Hindu, you know, listen. How do you scold someone? <laughs> well, I, whatever. Because I don't we knew that. something went down. Yeah. But it didn't went, go down. He like went some... overboard. You know, he was supposed to behave. Instead, he didn't behave. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> he went bananas. He went fucking But he played nuts. all of us. He played like the effeminate guy that yeah. was very peaceful. No, he wasn't. And very like, oh my God. I'm here helping him. Right. Meanwhile, fucking Abdul, 
He had just come to the States. He had never seen a white woman before. He was seven foot four. What? He was seven foot four with a two foot dick. He was getting hard <laughs> odds on the field seeing those white chicks that were just the old women. Like, he would see old white women and get hard on the Indian dude. He was eating 20. How many eggs would they send him up to his room for breakfast? A lot. <laughs> a lot, this fucking guy. He was a giant. It's a fucking giant, man. That's right. You just refreshed my memory, but there's more to it. Now you remember like, the Hindu guy. You know? We were laughing oh our asses God. off because funny as shit. he was sweating. He was, he was dripping with he was sweat dripping. when we finally found him. And he and was like, oh, I don't know what happened to him. She was upset. Her. And she was like, yeah, this motherfucker tried to put his hands up my ass and everything. And I was like, oh, my, I thought he was a nice guy. You know, I, I he quit the next. Something happened. Did he quit? He got replaced. Yeah, yeah. something happened. Yeah, he, something went he down. He wasn't. That, he wasn't innocent. Right at yeah. the end, he had to go back to India. His dad was sick overnight, yeah. so something went down. I do him. remember that. That was a funny. Yeah, fucking, that was a funny little fucking story. I figured I picked on him because he looked like an innocent guy. I said, "All right, no, he's a nice guy. He won't do any harm." You know. I never, ever, ever went to Albuquerque with those guys. Albuquerque? Yeah. yeah I only went there. Those guys were going on Wednesday no, nights I never and went shit. There. I only and went always... there when I did another project, another movie, but I never went to Albuquerque. I just stayed in. I loved Santa Fe. I fucking loved it. That was a great place. It's just, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't want to leave when it, you know, like the L.A. part of the movie was okay. Santa Fe was just a blast. Was a the rap party everything? Rap party was. I got drunk, man. I had a fight with the old lady. I was. I walked away and remember I came back. I was. I took too long and then some guy was sitting next to her and I fucking screamed at the guy. Guy ran away. He worked in the hotel. He was just sitting there innocently. He put his hand out like that. I went the fuck out of here. <laughs> if, if I gotta think of my funniest memory. I was like, like, if, if somebody said to me, give me your funniest day on the set of The Longest Yard, it's definitely going into my room and definitely having two ounces of weed in my fucking bag. And I would roll up weed with my football uniform on and the tattoos. I didn't realize so many people were smoking pot. Oh, my God. On that let me tell you something. Movie. When Goldberg would rip the door off the hinges... I would lose my mind by myself in that trail. Because I could feel him, I could hear him yelling about something, and then the door coming off the hinges and him throwing it out into the fucking little pathway where the golf course used to ride back and forth to pick up the players and the fucking... <clears throat> it was a blast. It really was. It was a magical... Um, I don't know, just the time we had... It was one of those projects where you just, you'll just you never forget. And they play it all the time. It's amazing. They fucking play it. They play constantly. it. Constantly. I cannot believe, like... Constantly. You know, it. it's a shame they couldn't have made another movie out of it because it's got such an audience. I saw Irvin in, at the fight, McGregor fight, picked me up in the air. He had me in a bear hug for like five minutes. Man, it was it was a great time. Great time. You know, every once in a while, I I, I put on Sons of Anarchy. Um, I come home at night, and I just want to decompress, you know. Yeah. And I'll put on those episodes when Lobo is on that. I don't know what season it is. Lobo Sebastian is on three or four episodes of Sons of Anarchy, and they kill him off. They chop his fucking head off and shit. But. Every time I see those episodes, I remember how nice of a time you, me, and him were having. Yeah, the three of us. Because you have, you know, listen, man, Irvin and those guys were Michael. Yeah, they were fun, but they were all but like, they were you doing know, their own thing. They were doing You their were thing. scared of Romanowski. The fucking wrestlers, you had to fucking have a liver and a half to drink with those animals. Right. You know. And then you had Adam and his buddies. Yeah. They, they, they weren't going to invite you upstairs. No. Then you had no. the one and only Tracy Morgan. Who once they realized his fucking torment, they shot him out as quickly it's as like, fucking possible, dog, and got him on a plane the fuck out of there. Yeah. That's the way. And somebody once told me, they go, listen, Joey, if I ever get you on this show, my goal is to shoot you out before anybody even shows up. 
I don't want nobody to see you. I don't want nobody to see you even on the fucking show. I just want you to go off. And I thought about it. And I go, that's how you shoot somebody who is a little fucked up. Why fuck around? You yeah. know he's fucked up. You know what? He makes 6 o'clock. Let's six o'clock. shoot him by 7 o'clock. If right. he can make 6 o'clock, tip top Magoo. On time, he's not drunk, right? Yeah, he does that all the time. Okay, shoot him out at 7. Let's shoot him out till 10. Don't shoot the stars in till he leaves. Why get them upset? Yeah. Because the guy's a powerhouse. Yeah, he's the great. stars come in, they see him, and they go, why is he here? He's too funny for the show. Only a few, listen, if you watch the pilot of 30 Rock, the show he was on with the white chick, what's her name? Lee. Uh, uh, 30 Tina Fey. Tina Fey. She's brilliant for putting him on there. Not too many people would have put Tracy Morgan on that fucking show. Well, he's a talent. She hit it out of the park. And if you watch the pilot, she has to talk him into the show while he's in a strip club, which is the funniest scene ever. He's like, yeah, I'll let you talk to me. I'm on my way to the club. And he goes into a strip club, and she's sitting there with these naked women, and she's trying to talk him into fucking whatever the fuck it is. It's brilliant shit. Because they got him. I guarantee Tina Fey didn't want him around on that. Right. I guarantee she Get him in, that. get him out. Get him in, get him yeah. out. He's not going to get crazy. Yeah. You know. I and, remember Adam used to like, you know, you could see Adam liked him. Yes, but he, he was liked like, him, but yet he knew he didn't want to let him go off. He, he, he didn't want to, he wanted to keep him a little under control. And Adam was, a, you know, Adam was a, he was a lot of fun on that movie. He was, he was a. He was. I mean, I remember him always being in a pretty good mood in that movie. He was, you know, he he was the ringleader, but he kept everybody, everybody happy. I mean, he just seemed very happy in them when he was doing all those guys being around. That there was so much to be around. But I, I, I like I said, I was with you, Lobo. I mean, thank God I didn't. You couldn't get too involved. With, there was too much of that. Let me tell you something, brother. I'm not, I have no, you know. Plus, I was, you well, know, well, I was, I was, I was fucking focused. I was. Well, in the Seattle, it was '97, and his movies were coming out, and they were hitting. And I had dear friends who were into him, and I went to their house and I watched them. And I go, no, I, I can't. Didn't know. I can't deal with this shit. This is terrible. Right. And the years passed, and I boycotted them in my mind. It wasn't my type of humor. Right. Everything changed the moment I shook his hand the first time. I felt so guilty with myself. Yeah. Because. Well, because you had preconceptions about him. I had tremendous and, preconceptions about him. And you probably said, this, this guy's not. I think I had said the same kind of thing. When I walked out of that car and he picked up my fucking luggage with flip flops on, a pair of shorts, and a t shirt, and walked me up the stairs and told me about what was about to happen and. It's great to have you. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. You're all packed. You're ready to First go. First class all the way, guys. Yeah, yeah, let's go. He yeah. took us into that room. Yep. And we did the table read. The we table first read, went to the table opened read. Opened the door. He was so. We sat in there. There was food in the back. I remember sitting in between Burt Reynolds. You were at the end of the table. Yeah, I was yeah. all the way in the back with I saw you. Warriors come out to play. Oh, Patrick, yeah. John Baker. I was with yeah. him. Good actor. I was with Michael <laughs> because I knew Michael uh, Irvin from the Best Damn Sports Show. Okay. In fact, there's a tape of me roasting Tom Arnold going off. Really? On that whatever channel that was on, uh, Fox Sports Fox. One. Yeah. There's a there's a tape of me somewhere. I, I auditioned for that show. Which one? Best damn sports show. Oh please. Got hit in the fucking kneecap by Jim Lampley, swinging a bat. That was the audition. In the audition, he was swinging a bat. Talking about the movie sixty one and took a full swing and smashed me right in my fucking kneecap. And I had just had pneumonia. I think I was in shock. And Deacon Jones, everybody was in shock. They go, You all right, kid? Everybody stopped. I don't know, I, I just I was like I didn't feel well and I said, I just want to get out of here. And he he smashed me in the knee. He swung he didn't realize he was sitting so close to me. I screamed right on the set. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. Crazy. I should have fucking laid down and sued Fox. Should have fucking played dead, but I was just like, get me out of here, get me out of here. I was coming out of some illness, and I just was like, I don't know. I, I just, I couldn't even speak. Producers were like, hey, talk, talk. And I was like, I just didn't want to be there. I just did the audition because I wanted to get out of the house. I had been sick and all this shit. But getting back to the longest show, I did, 
Adam was great. Did my, you go to... My mother had a heart attack, and Adam yes, could have been nicer. Now, did you go to New Mexico right from the table where he was? I went pretty soon, and that's okay. when my mom had the heart attack, and then I had to go back. And then and then he said, yeah, go ahead. Don't worry. He said, my mother... I met you on the van ride on the way back is where we got kind of... Is that where we met? You were headed back to for your mother's thing. We, were, yeah. we had just gotten there. We had just been, got there. We had just gotten I there. I went out for a pass, and, and the ball... It's still my finger to this day. It never healed. Some guy threw me a pass and it jammed it. Like he threw a fucking 100 mile per hour pass and my finger never fucking healed right. Unbelievable. Then I almost broke my foot when I fell off Bob's sack. If you remember, I did half the movie with like a broken foot. You remember, I hurt my foot. That's right. I fell off the fucking thing. I was supposed to do that mud scene with Adam. That was in the original movie. And I couldn't do the scene. We we had to do that mess hall scene because in the original movie they have a fight in the swamps it's and the you guy and him and you it's threaten me and him Adam. for push ups. Yeah. Then you put mud in his and pants. And I put mud in his pants, he puts mud and that fucking scene we could not do because I couldn't I could only limp. I was in I was in agony. I was coming to work every day with the fucking on the crutches. So I fell off his back and I had a bone contusion on my heel. And I couldn't do that. They were like, This kid can't do the fight. I couldn't even run through the tires. Some tall fucking dude, is, if you look at it, is a tall guy. That me, was the double. Yeah, the double. yeah, the double. One of the doubles. And then I come out of the tire. But, uh, no, Adam was great. He was just, he was he was like way different than you would have ever thought. You know, I had heard guys that worked with him. Then my brother worked with him and said he's a great guy. And I had other guys that said he's really a good guy. And, um, you know, and the nice thing about him was he let people shine. He did. You know, if he knew you were funny, he passed you the ball. He threw you the ball. He gave you a shot. I mean, he, he gave me a legitimate shot. That that part was nothing on paper. And then it became like, it became like a part. It became something. And right after the first scene with me and you, the half of me ball, he came over to me. He fucking came over to me. I had the haircut. And he goes, dude, you're fucking funny, dude. You're a funny dude. And I was just, you know, I, I was just going there trying to create a character. I wasn't thinking about anything because... It's a million years. That was a funny scene, you know. Tree out. You know, you doing the tree out. And I come over there. You have a meatball, whatever I said. That was my first day. Yeah, that was like the first. That was my first real day. But I was down there for a week. Oh, you were? And I would wake up and I'd be in the hotel room. Ah. Uh. i go downstairs, eat breakfast, go back up, smoke a joint. And then about two, I would be hungry. And i call the set. And they'd send the shuttle over to get me and drive me to the set. I'd go over there, shake a few hands, hang out with Ivan, get some chicken breast or whatever the fuck they were eating. That was great. Eat like a gavo. Yeah, you could go eat and, and go back to yeah, the hotel. Yeah, then when I was ready, give me a shuttle back ride to the hotel. And let me get a box to go. The big fat dude would give you a box of chicken and whatever you want. Oh, man. Yeah. And you went back to your I mean, room and you watched TV and nobody bought And I did that for the first five You got to understand, days. we got treated like kings. You don't get treated like that today on other movies. You know? Fed, you know, I mean, no, but not like that. That was Adam treated everybody great. That was first class all the way. I mean, it was really, really good. And gave you a car. I think I had a car. I had a car. Per diem. It was fucking. Dog, when I got there, I had a pack, a half a pack of cigarettes. I had it was fucking a, great. a joint and a half. And I, I don't know what I had for money. I had nothing. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. And when we landed... Hey, I love that. When they hand you that envelope. Oh, my God. You know, when they hand you that I was, envelope. Guys, I got no reason to oh. bullshit you motherfuckers. I borrowed... I think I got paid. I, I, we went on a Tuesday. And I did comedy that Monday night. And whatever cash I had and whatever extra my wife had. Me and you were waiting for the residuals. <laughs> oh, you remember the like first couple? motherfucker. We were fucking talking, planning... We were like, you were like, Nikki, I'm waiting for this what motherfucker. Oh, I had it on paper. Yeah, you, you, I was were, doing fucking, the math. you were doing the math. I figured you it out. You were super all... me up. And you had me on the fucking go. I was, I couldn't <laughs> wait. And I think it was like the second or the third that was like the big check. Yeah, I think the first one might have been a little small. And then I was like, all right, where's this motherfucking Coco said it's going to be big? And it, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it no, was that tremendous. Was, that was, uh... that was a big movie. Fucking big movie. I mean, it was really a. It was. It was. It was a. It was a blast. I have to say, it was special. You know, the whole experience. It was good. I mean, I knew it was going to be. I knew it was going to be something. Both premieres were good. The New York premiere was great. 
That was a good one. I almost got into it with a whole fucking. I want to get into it. Uh, we had a blast there. Blast in L.A. Uh, the L.A. one, Lee, by where Jimmy Kimmel shoots. Yeah. They rented that out and put that into a football stadium. Into a, yeah, my with God. With artificial turf. And it was all We all had stadium. footballs. It was great. It was football at our tables with our names. and our things. Names, It was fucking crazy, man. Fucking baseball cards. We all had our own cards. I'll never forget that I got the cocaine delivered to the fence. <laughs> you did? The kid pulled up and I walked. I said, I'll be right back. And I walked straight to the fence during the premiere. Gave the guy the 60 bucks and he gave me the gram and nobody saw anything. And I walked back to the fact, table. You told me you had some pictures for me once from the New York one. You were like, I got some pictures for you, but I never got those pictures. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I don't know what kind of fucking things. pictures you said. I got some pictures. Those are some fucking wild nights for me, man. Oh, that was a good night. Boz was, the Boz, the Boz was cool. Everybody was really cool. Everybody was cool. I mean, you know, everybody was, you know. Let me I, ask you something. Fuck the longest shot. Tell the people the recipe for the sauce. Oh, my sauce? Why? It's, uh, you know. Nicky did it again. You know what I'm saying? Knocked it out of the park with the sausage, with the pork. You know, you get the, uh, cut up the garlic, brown the garlic, put the meat in, and you put your fresh basil, your oregano, a little parsley, a little grated cheese, a little sugar, a little wine, and uh, then you put it on a nice little low flame, cook the meat, and ba-boom. But it's the hand. You understand? You like that, huh, Joe? Nikki Red Sauce. It's coming this year. I know I promised all you guys. I'm getting it out there. It's been a while, but it's going to be a... I don't know. I had a roll of paper towels. Tonight he got the real thing. No, this is tremendous. Yeah, he loves it. We got the Arab and the other thing with nothing. We shouldn't even have got that shit. It don't <laughs> compare dick to this. This is... Well, I wanted you to taste the real thing, because the last time you loved the the jar sauce, and the jar sauce was fucking good. Fuck it. I'm anti-eating sausage after 6 o'clock. And those are good sausages. You made these? No, I got them from a fr fresh from a butcher. Those are no bullshit sausages. You can't buy those in uh, Trader Joe's. That a boy. So it, is this gravy when they say no nah, I call it sauce some Italians call it gravy but you know to me I don't like to say gravy because that sounds like fucking you know white people say that stuff I don't know some Italians do it yeah it's not supposed to be gravy who gives gravy. a fuck I don't give a fuck nah, it's fucking sauce it's sauce you I wanna call it gravy go ahead some people wanna make I, I, I call it sauce I don't give a fuck what Nikki you call Red it. sauce is what I always call it you know? Let's just eat and have the fucking this good shit time. shit tomorrow will be even better. Speaking of eating, this show, like I told you in the beginning, I always got great sponsors. I love them with all my heart. I have a great time with them. I don't mind talking about them. But one of my favorites, that's why they stuck around and I wanted them to stick around, was Blue Apron. And like I told you in the beginning, Blue Apron is the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. And while many people know... What we do, many don't know about what type of meals you eat when you cook with Blue Apron. You're not just having burgers for dinner. You're making short rib burgers with a happy cheddar sauce and a pretzel bun, crispy shallots and green beans and mashed potatoes, all in under 45 minutes and without a trip to the grocery store. Are you following me? Here's the beauty about Blue Apron, all right? Blue Apron delivers fresh pre-proportioned ingredients and step-by-step -step recipes right to your door that can be cooked in under 45 minutes. The menu changes every week based on what's in season and is designed by Blue Apron with the in-house culinary team. Blue Apron offers 12 new recipes each week and customers can pick two, three, or four recipes based on what best fits their schedule. Blue Apron sends only non-GMO ingredients and meat with no added hormones. All right. Blue Apron is taking care of you. Because I'll tell you what. Listen to this week's menu. This month's menu. Steak Diane with mushroom pan sauce and mashed potatoes. Do you know how to make that? No, you don't. With Blue Apron, you'll learn how to make that. General Tao's chicken with bok choy and jasmine rice. <laughs> Do you know how to make that? No, you don't. 
I with blue I apron. You know how to make that. Whole approved Mexican spice barramundi with kale, sweet potato, and avocado salad. Do you know how to make that? No, you don't. Do you know how to make approved tagarachi chicken lettuce cups with avocado? No, you don't. You don't know how to make none of these things. That's what Blue Apron, like I said, we have the team of professional chefs putting in a lot of care into creating recipes each week. All right? Some of the best parts of our day happen over dinner. So we want you to share that perspective. A family that cooks together stays together. Blue Apron is available for two or for the family plan. But it all starts right here. Blue Apron is taking care of the church of what's happening now. They're going to hit you with the first three meals, a $30 value with your first order if you visit blueapron.com slash Joey. Again, blueapron.com slash Joey. Like I said, this week's menu, oh, my God, Steak Diane with the mushroom pan sauce. Let's get to it. You understand me? And you get $30 off with free shipping at blueapron.com slash Joey. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. This show is also brought to you by Honor. You're like, Joey, why is your mind always ticking? You know why? Alpha brain, that's why. I can tell you it's Tarifa. I go on my little alpha brain cycles from time to time, and I'm tip-top magoo. I get my six hours sleep. Who's going to stop me? Let me tell you why I love alpha brain and why I love Honor, because they back what they sell. If it don't work for you, you send it back and they give you your money back. Better yet, you don't have to send the product back. Not to mention all the other great products they have. Like Shroom Tech Sports, Shroom Tech Immune, the, the Hemp Force Protein Milkshakes are fucking delicious. The Acai Vanilla or the Cocoa, whatever the fuck you choose. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Onnit.com right now and press in. Church. Bam! And get 10% off your order. Bam! Delivered right to your motherfucking house. You understand me? Also, you're thinking about jujitsu. You're thinking about mats. You're thinking about rash guards. Do me a favor. Go to Fujisports.com right now. Look at the great selection they have. You like something, Preston Church. Help us out. Get 15% off your order right now today. I want to thank my brother Nick Futuro for making the sauce. Also, I want to apologize to him about asking that I didn't want a bunch of kids in the studio because I didn't know these children and didn't want to get in trouble. So don't worry. My deepest apologies. I want you to extend my apologies. I'm a gentleman, but I don't want to get no children in problems. And I get problems and you get problems. Right. Then we're on the cover of THC. Apology and accepted. Don't, don't and if worry. you don't think we're getting work now, think of what happens when you make the cover of TMZ for hanging out with kids and drinking. Because <laughs> okay, they, they, they were drinking red wine. That's all I need to see. Even if the kids weren't drinking. They come in here, there's three bunks. We go to jail, me and you. Yeah, I we don't do know. 22, 22 to life, no parole. Anyway, I want to thank you guys again. Don't forget, two weeks from now, Austin, Texas, like a motherfucker. The 18th to the 20th, Lee's coming with me. Go to capcity.com right now for tickets. I want to thank my brother, Nick Turturro, for a marathon podcast, Lee Syatt. And for him cooking so well. Have a great week. Stay black. And see you Monday morning. Thank you, buddy.